Hello friends, welcome to Coding Garden C with CJ. Welcome to Scraping the Web with Node.js. We have, oh, and welcome to New Quest, that's what today is. We have our wonderful guest, Tony. Say hello, Tony. Hello. And we have even more of a surprise. Look at his face. So, What's so, up? So we got, we got, I got him a, a webcam this morning so um, we could actually do this. You could see his face and interact and stuff like that. Welcome everyone that's watching. Let's say hello to all the peoples. Hello, Carlos. First time. Welcome. Uh, Ilya says, go, CJ. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello, Jan. Hello, Jake. And Himanshu, 12 a.m. Don't, don't stay up too late. <laughs> Marios, welcome, welcome. And Nixie. Nixie's here. Welcome. And there's Jimmy and Rasha. Uh, Anders says, weekend streams are the best for Euros. Amazing. Happy to hear it. <laughs> uh, Ilya, Mayur, Mus Musa, Eric, Zuber, Ilya. <laughs> Amy, oh, Amy says, OMG, we can see the Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Luis, Chachia, Sanket, Mayur, Muhammad, Wally, JT, Josh, Joe, welcome. <laughs> and Skelly, welcome. Okay, so um, we did a poll in Sankit. I, I'm gonna, I'll keep looking over. I, I fall, if I forget to mention your name, just remind me. Um, but uh, I did a poll in the Discord this morning. I had some ideas for like what we could scrape. And we did a poll asking, should we do like dogs available for adoption, uh, recipes on sites with too much front matter. If you've ever looked at like blogging recipe sites before, have you ever done that, Tony, where it's like, they have like pages and pages just describing like their experience with this recipe, but you have to scroll yeah, all like the way. Their life story leading to this one recipe. I'm like, I just want to make brownies. <laughs> right. And so the idea was like, we could just scrape the specific recipe. And then the last one, which uh, has one, and I, I like the idea of it is scraping menu items from restaurants. So the idea being like right now, you can really just search for a restaurant. You can search for like a type of restaurant, like Italian, Asian, fast food, like the grouped into categories. But what if I could find all the chicken sandwiches within 10 miles of me? Yeah. <laughs> so the, the idea is we're gonna, we, have, we found a website that has menus on it. So we're gonna attempt to scrape all of the menus and then build a front end where you can just search for menu items and see what restaurants have those menu items. So that one, uh, we also threw out a poll to see what we should build it in, either Vue or React. Uh, Vue is the overwhelming winner. Um, and that's fun, because I haven't, I haven't actually built a Vue app on stream in a while, so that'll be fun. Um, yeah, any other things, Tony? That's pretty much it. Um been like a little while since we did one of these i think i've just been kind of busy oh definitely yeah so we'll we'll take it slow uh, we'll uh, ask as many questions as you uh, want and as you can tony um and as you may have noticed we have a very a very light checklist today um we're kind of just going to be making things happen ask any and all questions in the chat we'll get to it absolutely let's catch up on saying hello to the peoples uh send Keith, hello and ed welcome jesus welcome and jillian <laughs> there are a lot of you here today, and the stream hasn't even started yet. And Alka says, who's this handsome fellow? <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's Tony. Uh, in all of the past episodes, you've just heard his voice. But I, So this, this is the world we live in today. So like we live thousands of miles away, but I went on the internet, and I, I ordered a webcam and had it delivered to his house. Uh, I got a text message actually saying that like it was there. I was like, <laughs> oh, we got to go back to the house. Like it's yeah. the sitting room porch. Yeah, so Amazon Prime now, it's a pretty amazing thing. It probably got delivered by, via drone, but nobody knows because nobody was home when it happened. Um, <laughs> Bob says, what was this? P people are excited to see your face, Tony. I'm, I'm glad we did this. I know. Like, <laughs> we did a bunch of these, and I was just kind of been this ethereal thing. The machine learning has been visualized. Definitely. And hello, Raphael and Chrisu and Mohammed. Mohammed suggests React. Um, we, will, we will actually be we – we are going to do view. Overwhelming vote. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I, I, Go ahead. Like, okay, so we were talking about like, we were, we were just kind of like coming up with like a bunch of ideas of what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I don't know how possible this would be with um, JavaScript, but I would love for us to try one day because I've seen like somebody make like a, some sort of machine learning thing that could like teach itself to drive on roads in Grand Theft Auto by itself, like a Python script. Oh, that would be interesting. We should try to do something like that with uh, JavaScript one day. Okay, I don't know if, I mean, it might be possible with like Node.js and um, automation or something like that. Yeah, we'll, but... we'll have to do our research, like not definitely. Okay, not... but but yeah. now that you mentioned that, I will I will point out, um, so we have this GitHub repo, it's called uh, landscaping. 
and uh, you can open up an issue if you have an idea for us to uh, for build for me to build something for for us to do something on uh, new quest. Um, make sure to read the readme and see how to contribute there. But that's a great idea, and I will definitely add it later. Okay, um, let's 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 do it. <laughs> oh yeah, and I think people are noticing the cat in the window, Tony. Oh yeah, there's gonna be cats everywhere. <laughs> You'll see Jasper. Jasper's really cool. He like sits right behind Tony. Okay, um, so. What is web scraping? And what, what's the idea here? So uh, this website, allmenus.com, um, it lists menus for various places around the world. Uh, and, and maybe not around the world. It might, might just be, uh, yeah, it's just like U.S. cities. Um, Tony is in uh, Columbus, Ohio. I'm in Denver, Colorado. So we're actually going to be scraping Columbus um, because I want to help Tony find some food. And the idea is this website has a lot of data, right? It has restaurant information, like their name, it has their location, it has their link out to uh, Grubhub, which is an app where you can order food and have it delivered to your house. But there are so many restaurants, lots and lots of them. So uh, what you could do, and let's say, and look, and look, there's categories on the left. What should we, what, what, what kind of food are you feeling today, Tony? Or what did you have for lunch? Mm. Well, for lunch, uh, I had kolaches. Uh, what would that be under cuisine? Uh, maybe pastries or like um, breakfast foods. Yeah, let's, let's just do breakfast foods. There we go. So if I check breakfast, I'm only seeing restaurants in Columbus, Ohio that uh, categor are categorized as breakfast. There's actually not many. I guess this site doesn't have all restaurants, but it does have see, quite a few. That, that's the thing. If we were able to search by like item, you could see like other restaurants have breakfast things on the... Uh, Right. Exactly. That they, they may not be categorized as breakfast items, but they have a breakfast menu. Definitely. Right. Um, so pick one of these restaurants. Um, let's they're all like chain restaurants. Yeah. Uh, what about Cornerstone Deli and Cafe? Let's do, let's do Sunny Hedges. Street Cafe. Sunny Street Cafe. Okay. So you click on it and then you get a menu. So it tells you uh, there's the breakfast combos, how much they cost, all this good stuff. Um, and there's also a lunch menu, but... The main idea is we want to we want to take this data like we I, we essentially want to write a script that goes into every single one of these menus and gets these menus items uh, menu items with their names and their description and their price and put all of those in a database and then we can search we can say okay uh, chicken fried steak and eggs and see what restaurants have that on their menu or something like that um, and so the way this will work is we have to actually write some code that will request this web page and then extract the data out of it. And so the library we're going to be using for that is uh, known as Cheerio. So uh, if you're familiar with jQuery in the browser, uh, it has a very similar API. It's designed after jQuery. And the idea is you can load an HTML string into it and then pluck things out. Like you can say, I want all H2s on the page or all things with this class on the page. So we'll, we'll use this library to uh, pick some things out. I, I did a little bit of research earlier, and I found something that might even be easier that we're going to be doing. Um, oh, apparently I had this menu open from earlier. I don't know. Um, but the first thing we need to do is get the list of restaurants. So, and th the one thing I like about this website is it literally has all restaurants in Columbus all on the same page. So it's going to make it really easy for scraping. Oh, and uh, Jasper's in Tony's lap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if we search for pizza, there's 164 occurrences of the word pizza. So this this one web page has all of the restaurants on it. So I think the first thing we want to do is go in and grab. Um, restaurant name, maybe categories, location, and then the link to Grubhub if it exists. But the way we're going to do this is by actually inspecting the source code. So if we look at the source of this web page, um, we can see that it is just a bunch of HTML. Let's like zoom in a little bit. Cool. <laughs> um, and like, I mean, one, one thing we could do is if you open up the dev tools, you can actually um, inspect this. So I can say like, what is this? And you'll notice that this entire UL has the class of restaurant list, and then everything inside of it has a class of restaurant list item. So if we got the source of this page and then said, select all restaurant list items, we'd get each individual one, right? Mm -hmm. And then if we go into it, um, it has some stuff. There's a description container. There's a class name, so like this would give us the name of the restaurant. Cuisine list would give us the types. 
Um, delivery would give us the address. Uh, that's like the grub. It has the Grubhub link, and like this one is actually organized in a way where everything has a nice, uh, easy to read class. This is going to actually be pretty pretty easy to scrape. Um, and we also see the link to that menu itself. So I guess what we're going to want to do is hold like get all of the information, including the link, because then after we have all of that, we'll want to parse the specific menu. And if mm -hmm. we look at this source. Let's see. So again, this this is like a lot of times when you're scraping websites, it's not that easy. The, these people have made it really easy for us in that um, things have really good class names like menu items. So we're going to reach in and grab those. So right now, can we can we do like a sort of uh, test? Like so right now I'm seeing soup on PF Chang, right? Sure. Yeah. So I don't think PF Chang like would be advertised as a soup restaurant. So right. Let's go back to the uh, thing and see, and see if we can filter by cuisine and put soup and see if it even comes up. Yeah, like is soup a thing? Yeah, soups. No, right? So like, there is but no PF, soup. but it has soup, right? We we have a million dollar idea right here, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe at least worth a, a bowl of soup idea. Definitely, cool. Um, the, the, the chat is blowing up. Let me see if I can catch up. This was this would have been a great day to actually use um, my uh, chat the monitoring chat tool. Yeah, well, the chat monitoring tool that I built a while back. We, we've got we've got mods in the chat, so. Uh, we do. Let me double check everything. Okay, everything's good. Um, let's catch up. First time live, Satya. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> no soup for you. Uh, Taylor just came from another pair programming video on web scraping, stumbled upon this. Awesome. Welcome, welcome. Zuber asks, what database are we going to use? I was thinking we use Mongo, uh, like a MongoDB, but you are suggesting Firebase. That might be interesting. Um, we've used MongoDB in the past. I don't know if we've used Firebase on the stream. We haven't. I mean, that would, that would be cool. Let's, yeah, let's, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Insert into a Firebase DB. Cool, and that should still allow us to query it. Uh, Wally Oxen says, meow. <laughs> <laughs> um, hello, Ellen. Rasha asks, is that a cat? It is a cat. That is Jasper in his lap. <laughs> and hello, Tipsy Ninja. Welcome. Uh, yeah, so Jasper is the one in your lap. Um, who's the cat in the window? That is Jerry, who is named after Jerry Maguire. <laughs> Jerry and Jasper. Uh, Bob says I have 70 million viewers. I don't. I have what appears to be 77. Um, it's still a lot. <laughs> Happy Saturday, Kiwi. Come on, welcome. Um, Alka is chowing down on pizza. <laughs> DiGiorno. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not just delivery. It's DiGiorno. Okay. It might be impossible to keep up with the chat today, but um, <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> we'll, yeah. we, we will definitely try. And um, if you're if you're in the Discord and you really have something really important you want to tell me, throw it in there, and I can definitely check it out there as well. Okay. Let's let's uh, let's do this. But I think before we do it, let's just uh, play around with the selectors in the browser. So, um, let's say we we just want to select all the menu items, right? So, mm -hmm. if we use the element inspector and we select this. We found that this thing has the class of restaurant dash list dash item. So, one thing we can do is like on the web page, if it has jQuery, we can just use that. Um, the way you can check if it has jQuery, if you do dollar sign dot fn dot jQuery, and if it comes back with a uh, a number, that's the version of jQuery. So this page actually has jQuery, meaning we can use jQuery in the console. Um, it's also possible to load jQuery as a snippet into your dev tools if you're ever on a website that doesn't have jQuery. But because this one has it, we can just play around with it and find our selectors. So I'm going to share control with you, Tony. OK. There you go. Um, and let's try to select some things. So you can click back on the Elements Inspector. All right. And you notice that that has restaurant dash list dash item, the class right there. So yeah. in the console, let's try to select all restaurant list items. So with jQuery, we do that with a dollar sign and then parentheses. Um, and then inside the parentheses, you put in quotes or in a string, you just specify the selector that you want. 
So this is restaurant. So we're gonna, so class, so we're going to use dot. Exactly. Oh, what is it? Restaurant I think it's items? Uh, dash list dash item. I can't see the click back on elements. Try. There you right, go. There we go. Yeah, restaurant, restaurant dash list, list item. Yeah, and so uh, Tony, Tony made a good point there. Because it's a class, you just use the dot selector. So uh, the way jQuery works is anything that is a valid CSS selector can go in there. So if we run this, we should get all the items on the page. Are you ready, Tony? I'm ready. Let's make it Whoa. happen. <laughs> it's a lot of them. So there are 500, so there are 500 restaurants on the page. Um, we could expand it. And then what's cool about the dev tools is like, if you hover over something in a selection, it actually highlights that item. So we're grabbing each of the list items. That's awesome. OK. Um, I think I think we've done enough like validation, especially like looking at the source of the page. We know that it has all of this stuff. So let's just get, up, uh, get a server up and going locally. Okay. Um, so I'm going to make a directory called server. And then inside of the server, we're going to initialize it as an npm repo that just creates a package JSON. And then, Tony, will you please install? Uh, we're going to need, or we're, we'll use uh, node fetch. So you can do uh, npm install. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask if you want to do npm or yarn. Yeah, we'll use npm. Uh, okay. Node fetch. And then uh, the library we're going to use to extract the stuff is called Cheerio. So do a space and then just type in Cheerio. Cheerio. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, so later on, so go ahead and hit enter. Um, well, actually, I was thinking we were going to build like an Express API around this. But if we insert this into a Firebase database, we won't need an Express API. It'll just be in the Firebase database. So I think for now, we'll just get the scraping happening. And then maybe we'll hook that up to put the stuff into Firebase. OK, so um, we have those things installed. Now in here, let's create an index.js. And let's bring those libraries in. So we installed them with npm, and now we want to use them in our JavaScript file. Mm -hmm. So create a variable called fetch, and then set that equal to require node fetch. It's uh, the one you installed, node-fetch. Yes, awesome. And then below that, let's bring in uh, Cheerio. So create a variable called Cheerio and require in Cheerio. Uh, Cheerio. I was going to say no dash Cheerio. No. That's not right. Yeah. Cool. And uh, I guess it's important to note, like, the things that we installed exactly match that. So we installed node fetch. That's how we bring it in. We installed Cheerio. That's how we bring it in. Um, are you using a new keyboard or a new microphone, Tony? Um, I don't think so. Why? I can hear you typing. It's pretty cool. I don't know. I don't. I feel like I haven't been able to hear you type in the past. I think usually maybe it ha might have something to do with a the way like Discord versus um, Zoom. Zoom, yeah. Well, and I guess it could also be I'm using Zoom on my uh, Windows computer. I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, if it's too loud, I can try to figure out a way to Def fix the settings. Definitely. Um, 0 0.76 viewers. Yeah, we're up to 80 viewers now. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Coding Garden. Um, if, this is, if this is your first time, we're happy you're here. This is, this is probably the most people have ever had this early in a live stream, so welcome. It's going to be a fun time. <laughs> We've gotten up, uh, I think, up to about this many before, like in like the end or the middle of some. Well, there was a, like the eight-hour live stream that I did. At one point, there were like a hundred people watching me eat sushi. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> that's that's its own category on um, Twitch. I think is social eating. Yeah. Cool. Okay. I digress. We brought this stuff in. Let's actually make the requests. So what we want to do is like request this web page and then um, start parsing the data inside of it. Um, Avi12 did make a, 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 a good point. You can technically use dollar sign in the console if jQuery isn't there. That's actually built into DevTools, but it won't behave like jQuery. You won't have the, um, like the each operator, and I don't think it selects a whole uh, number of them. But technically, you still could use that to make sure that it worked. Um, OK, so we want to scrape this web page basically just to get all the restaurants that are listed, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, if we sort, alpha sort alphabetical, 
Wait, are we missing some? I guess technically we don't have all of them because it only goes to F. Wait, there, I think I think it fixed itself. Or maybe not. Hmm. Honestly, this will be good enough for now, but we want, might want to see, like, is there a way to paginate it? Or we ha might have to uh, search individual cuisines because it doesn't give us back everything. Uh, regardless, well, actually, when we did the selector earlier, it did say that there were 500 of them. So I think that's the limit. Um, if we sort by name, yeah, there, yeah. so I guess technically it's only going to show us 500 at a time. And it says over 500. I don't know. Regardless, let's just get the most popular ones. OK, so we want to request this web page inside of Node. So um, right now, we could just hard code it. But technically, like we could create a function that takes in like the state and the city and then fetches that list of restaurants. OK. Let's, let's do that. So create a function. Let's call it uh, get restaurants. Yeah, so you can make this an, uh, an arrow function. So do parentheses. Uh, yeah, so uh, well, um, well, let me help you out. So if we're going to do it as an arrow function, we need to say const. And then in the parentheses, we'll say we want the, uh, the state and the city. OK. Mm -hmm. And for now, we're just going to be testing this thing. So let's call get restaurants. So invoke it and then pass in uh, OH as the state and then Columbus as the city. Do you know anything about Ohio? I know nothing about Ohio. <laughs> get restaurant. So like there's this whole thing about like if you yell OH, like people yell um, IO. It's something to do with like the, I think the, the oh, Buckeyes. Hi Ohio. <laughs> So these need to be wrapped in double. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Because, no worries, because we want them to be strings. Because we haven't declared like if Columbus is a, a very thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and I guess the other thing is, I we want to match like what's in the URL here. So um, I'm gonna make sure that they're lowercase. Cool. And so now that we have that, we want to create like a URL. Well, should, would it matter if they're in the URL, the capitalization? It might not, but it. It depends on the server that this thing's coming from. Like, it may not like that it's capital letters. So I just mm -hmm. want to match it exactly. Um, OK, so we want to construct this URL. But instead, we want to parameterize these to be the variables that got passed in. So um, let's change these to be like template literals. OK. So do you remember how that works? Yeah, just trying to select it and do the back ticks. And then gonna put state. Uh, well, um, so technically we're already in backticks because it's at the beginning and the end of the line. Mm -hmm. So, so we want to put a variable inside of this template literal. So how do we do that? Cash money. Oh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, and you wrap it in curly braces. Okay. Uh, the whole thing, or just yeah. the. Uh, just the variable that you want. So basically, what that says is inside of this string. Um, take the variable state and put its value in that string. And let's do the same thing for Columbus. Cash money. Oops. Cool. There we go. And uh, Alka has a good point. Like you, we technically could just do like do two lowercase inside of here to make sure that they're lowercase. Um, Let's do it. Why not? Just just to make sure, like, if we accidentally call it with the, the wrong thing. So we'll call uh, two lowercase and two lowercase. OK, let's just log this URL to make sure it's what we want. And we'll run it. So we'll say node index.js. Cool. So technically, we could invoke this with, like, uh, CO Denver, Denver, Colorado, and that should get that. OK. So we have the URL. Now we actually want to request the data. So for that, we will use fetch. So let's call fetch and then pass in the URL. And um, so this fetch, um, it, it actually is built into the browser, but node fetch is something that brings it to Node.js where you can use it. But it's a way of requesting data, very similar to Axios, very similar to uh, jQuery Ajax. but uh, it's a whole different thing. It works on streams now, and uh, but it's think of it as a way of requesting data. So 
we want to get the data at that URL, and then we'll uh, dot vin it. Actually, have we used have we used async await, Tony? We talked about it. I don't. Okay, let's write it. We'll write it as a promise, and then we'll convert it to async await. So, uh, fetch returns a promise because it takes a little bit to get the data, and then when we get the data back, we'll have the dot then, and so uh, invoke this, and we can do like a little inline uh, well, right on the same line as dot then. So do parentheses, and we can do a little one liner liner and say response, fat arrow. And then we'll say response.text, right? And we'll invoke that, exactly. So um, I believe we've, we've used fetch before, right, Tony? Yeah, we've, we've used fetch before. And we, I think we might have used like async or await like once. And we kind of talked about like, we should do like a whole thing <laughs> on it one day. Definitely. Um, this, but uh, typically what we have, I think we did a scraping episode where we, we, we technically did this, but in the past you might have seen us do response.json, right? And like mm -hmm. that's if we're contacting an API. Uh, but because we know this page is just HTML, we say text and that will give us back the HTML. Okay, so that's going to give us the HTML text and then we have to dot then this to get back the, the text. So do a dot then. Okay, and then we'll get act, we'll call the what we get back we'll call it the body because it's the body of, of the request or the, like the HTML body. So just say body, and then do an arrow function with uh, curly braces, and inside of here let's just log the body. Is Maddie vacuuming? No, that's my, that's the oscillating fan. Oh, okay. I was telling you about. <laughs> I, yeah, I could turn that off if it's too loud. Oh, no, I think it's okay for now. And so let's just log the body. And what should happen is our node script will actually request this web page, and then we'll just log out all of the HTML. Uh, I lost control uh, let's of see. the page. Try again. There you go. Oh, there you go. Console. Okay. All right. Let's try it. Uh, someone in the chat, I caught it, there's a lot of chats happening, but they did ask, how are you doing this in the console? We have Node.js installed. So this JavaScript file will not run inside of a browser. It's only going to run either here on my computer or like a server somewhere. And to actually execute the script, you use Node. So would you like to do the honors, Tony? And actually, let me make this really big because we're going to get back a lot of stuff. All right, do Node index.js. Boom! So we just requested all of the HTML of that page. Uh, now we can start scraping it. So this is where Cheerio comes into play. Uh, and I guess before we do that, let's use async await because it's fun. So I'm going to leave this exactly the way it is. I'm going to turn this into an async function and show how we would write this with async await. So we get the response, and we await fetch of the URL. And then we get the body, and this is awaiting response.text, and then we just log the body. So async await is a, a, a way of dealing with promises in a more synchronous way. You don't have like callback functions, um, but it, it's a lot nicer to look at. What do you think, Tony? Yeah, it's kind of, so I had this problem the other day with, um, I got my 3D printer set up. It's like, I think, there's sometimes things that like are made in code, especially like web dev stuff where it's like, it's all built on the shoulders of technology that came before it. Mm. So it's like for other, for people who are like, you know, like veterans of, of making stuff on the web, like a lot of this stuff just like, Oh, this is so nice and easy. But it's <laughs> like when you don't even understand like how it works on like, it's more base level, yeah. it can be a little difficult for like I beginners. No, definitely. And because the thing is, like, you still have to understand how promises work. Um, one, one thing this gives you is you don't have to use uh, callback functions, which can be a little bit confusing to beginners. But you still have to understand that, like, this is returning a promise. And we're waiting for that promise to come back to then do the next line of code. Um, technically, we should be wrapping this in a try catch. I'm going to leave it for now. Let's, let's do some scraping. So this, this is where the dollar sign comes into play. So what we'll do is create a variable called, um, you can get rid of this console log, but create a variable called dollar sign. 
and set it equal to Cheerio.load. And so uh, this is a method built into Cheerio, and it loads an HTML string. So if you invoke load and pass in body, it's going to take that HTML that we just got back and load it in. And now we have essentially, it's like jQuery. We can, we can query it. We can get stuff out of it. Cool. So now we can use what we did a bit ago, uh, restaurant list item. Um, we can use this selector, and this gives us back um, all of the list items, so uh, or all of the restaurants. So maybe, maybe we should do this. Let's, let's create a variable called restaurants and set that equal to an array. Hold on a second. Sure. Having, a, having an issue. <laughs> with typing or oh, just uh, the the page the what should I call it uh, I'm not trying to mess up your screen like this the, the, screen the zoom screen? meeting thing is being weird oh. trying to min minimize it for a second okay let me catch up on the chat let me see if there's anything interesting I missed there's so much there's so many of you hello welcome to coding garden <laughs> oh, wait uh, don't move my mouse sorry <laughs> sorry sorry <laughs> there he is um, yeah, Joe asked what text editor I'm using. I think somebody else answered in the chat, but this is VS Code. And um, I'll just show really quick. A lot of people really like my theme and stuff like that. So if you go to the Coding Garden GitHub, there's a GitHub repo called uh, VS Code Settings. And you can see all of the extensions I use, the font I use, my themes and color, and, and all that good stuff. So check that out. Um, so I, I still hear you, but I don't know where the, the Zoom meeting is. <laughs> like you can't see the screen? Yeah, like it's like it's gone. Hmm. Okay. Um, like when you click in the taskbar, you don't see it? Well, it, like it just disappeared and I still see it. it and it like I, I, have, I have Zoom meetings open, but it's like it's like join meeting or sign in. Oh no! I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, oh no! Oh, wait, 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 wait! I think I, I figured it out. You got it. Yeah. Okay. O cool. Okay. Crisis averted. Woo! All right, just a second. Don't uh, don't move on else. <laughs> sorry. 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 Okay, it's cool. We we've only been stream streaming for thirty six minutes. It's fine. Um, we we talked about what scraping is. We've got we're requesting a page. Now comes the fun part. Um, so you can see my screen, Tony. Yes. OK, yeah. so what, what I want to do is create an empty array called restaurants. And as we find each restaurant, we're going to push it into this array. OK. So just create a variable called restaurants, set it equal to an empty array. So uh, if re restaurants is going to be something that changes, would it be, make more sense to use it as let instead of comps? Well, the thing is, the reference to the variable uh, to restaurants will not change, meaning we won't reassign oh, it. Oh, OK. But Technically, um, you can still push into it. You can change the, the contents of a reference variable. Okay. It's a little weird, like if you've used const in other languages, because that means you can't change it at all. But technically, because this is an array, we can still push into it. Um, okay. uh, square brackets, just an empty array. Awesome. So, um, sorry. So we have this array, and now we're going to select all the items, and we want to like push them into this array. So built into. Um, a, this is like a collection of elements, is this thing called each, and this will give us each element. So you get access to the index in the array and then also the element in self, itself. So let's just call this like item. And then item is going to be equal to essentially each div that got selected. I think we hear Jasper in the background. No, well, that's Jerry. Yeah. Oh, that's Jerry. <laughs> hey, they, Jerry. <laughs> they, they yell a lot. They, Mike usually doesn't pick them up. OK, so um, each one of those restaurant list items is going to be like this this list item here, right? And then we want to select into it. So if we wanted to grab the name of the restaurant, we could pretty much use this selector, right? Mm -hmm. So um, how would you select that, Tony? Hold on. <laughs> uh, I think I have two. I think I figured it out. Hold on. This is going to sound, I think this might sound better. All right. Can you hear, still hear me? I can. All right. Now let me, hold on. 
Can you hear me now? That's actually worse. Worse. Okay. Uh, I mean, so, I mean, we can hear you, but I guess there's less background noise. How about now? I like the way it was better before. Okay, so even now. Oh. Uh, so I, yeah, that's, that might be better. Okay, because I like I, I was coming through like the headset microphone and the webcam microphone. Oh, I see. Okay, I'm adjusting his levels. Um, so, um, say say some things, Tony. Something, JavaScript. Say hello, hello. Struggle. <laughs> Help. Yeah, it is less bassy, but I think there's less background noise. Let me see. Okay, so for those of you that are joining us, welcome. This is the first time we've ever showed Tony's face on the stream, <laughs> and we're figuring out like the audio and video sharing issues. Um, maybe if I add a compressor. Say something, Tony. Hello, one, two, three. That's better. Da, 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 da. I think that's better. Say more. More. Say even more. Even more. Okay, that's good. Just make sure to talk into the microphone. Okay. Okay. Right. <laughs> no, you're, you're good. Okay. All right, All right Tony. We r r r let's let's go back to where we were. Right. We've selected every item. We have this variable called item. That item is literally equal to like this list item here, and now we can select into it, and we want this name. How would you select that name, Tony? Like, what selector um, could we use? Like the H4? Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. This cat. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you would use like just the tag H4 to select it? Um, yeah, like H4 class name. Yeah, why not? Let's do it. So let's say like... Uh, the name of the restaurant will be like item dot find. So item is itself, um, actually, we may have to wrap it to be able to find inside of it. We'll see if this breaks. But we should be able to reach inside and say, hey, grab the H4 that has the class name. And then we want its text. And then this will probably have some white space around it. I don't know. Let's just log the name here and see what we get. Okay. Let's run it. Item.find is not a function. Here is the thing. So inside of this each, item isn't actually like a, a Cheerio selector. It's just the element itself. So we need to create a Cheerio selector so that way we can use these things like find. So what I'll do is I'll wrap item in Cheerio. And now dollar sign item has this find function on it. You see what I did there? Are you talking, Tony? Oh, I'm sorry. My, my the mute thing was on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> lots lots of issues, and then more cats. <laughs> okay, um, but yeah. So basically, I needed to wrap this in a Cheerio item so that I could find it. <laughs> yes, and JT is mentioning time to get Tony a snowball mic. I think so. I think like we're gonna we're gonna get pro with this. Tony's becoming a better developer. We're building cooler apps. I need to get a, a turtleneck. I need to like, get Steve Jobs glasses, and. Well, that's, I guess that, that's really it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Small list of items. Um, okay, but now that we did that, we should be able to get all... Look at that, Tony. Look at that. Dairy Queen. <laughs> get all those oh, look, there's the other ones that weren't showing there before. Well, this is, this, is not, this is not in alphabetical order. This is just all popular restaurants. Mm. Yeah. Cool. All right, there's 500 of them. That's awesome. Um, I think... Uh, let's so let's do this. So we have the name really what we want to do is create like a restaurant object And that's gonna be an object and as we pluck out each of these things we're gonna put it into this object so um, Throw the name into that object And then uh, after the object, let's push restaurant into the restaurants array. So like after line 18. Are we going to use map? Uh, not map. We're just going to just push it in. So like right here, just do restaurants.push and pass in the, um, the restaurant. Uh, the, the whole restaurant, not just the name. Cool. 
So that pushes it into the array, and then what we'll do is afterwards we'll just log that entire restaurants array. Did I spell restaurants right? I think so. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> um, so now we've got a bunch of objects that have a name property. Now we want to get like their location, we want to get their Grubhub link if it exists, and put that into the object too. OK, so back to the web page. Um, if we look at the address container, it has this two things. It has the um, like the street address and then the um, city, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess like we could select the whole address container and then just grab the text. But what I think it's going to do is like put those two things on the same line. But let's just try it. So this is div with class address container. So now that we've selected the name, let's create a new variable called address, and let's do a very similar thing. All right. Const address. OK. And so yeah, we're going to do item.find. And in this case, we want to select a div that has a child. Oh, no, so a div that has a class. What was it? Um, oh, sorry. Oh, oh you, sorry, Tony. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, we, sh we should be better. We should be better communicators. Um, menu, that one. I like started tabbing away before you were even done. Um, Story of my life. <laughs> address dash container is what we want. So do div. Okay. And then it, it's a div with a class address dash container. Uh, dash, not dot. Oh. Cool. And let's try the same thing, just throw dot text on the end of it. Just to convert it down or tell it what we're looking for. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So when you do a find, it actually gives you back the element, and there are a lot of different uh, methods on it. Text will just give you the, the text of that element. Uh, and then we'll throw address in the restaurant, and let's see what we get back. I kind of like this. I oh boy. <laughs> um, so let's. Say, I kind of like the idea of the the node terminal being the uh, way the web browser would be used. Oh, like if people would literally have to enter commands to interact with. Yeah, the it looks it looks like if like Fallout. Like um, that's how it... So there are actually just a side note. There is this thing called I think it was like the Lynx web browser. So back in the day, um, this was like so the I think it was Lynx. Am I saying that right? LY index. Um, it's a text based browser. So, back before like graphical user interfaces existed, this links is, existed in Unix terminals, and people had to actually like tab through to find the link that they wanted to click on, and that would like refresh in the terminal. But yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> okay. One thing we can do is just trim this. So, if you do dot trim, that removes the, the white space on the, the beginning and the end of it. And that should that should make it a little bit easier to read. Let's see. Hey, so that's cool. Um, the only thing is there's like giant space between the street address and Columbus, like in the city. Is that like it trying to? Is that because it's formatting a new line still? Exactly. So like in the source of the page, um, there's like a p tag and then a new line and then another p tag. So it's like the white space in between these two p tags. Oh, because they, they both have that same tag. Yeah. Like if we if we real if we want to be proper about this, technically we could select every element that has an address class inside of here, and then just like concatenate each one. So like we're in control of the white space. So we're almost like concatenating it to its own element. Yeah, so like we're, we would do an each over all of the addresses, and then each part of it we would put in. Okay. Um, I don't want to be too picky, but yeah, like let's let's do it. Why not? So like instead of finding the address container, here's what we'll do. So we'll say let address equal. Initially, it's an empty string, and then we'll find all of the address items in the address container. Okay. And then we'll do an each on that, so that'll give us each uh, like part of the address. 
Let me zoom out just a little bit. And now we'll do a similar thing to what we were doing before. So like create a variable called like um, dollar sign part. Though, just a second, Alka has a suggestion. We could, um, we could do like a text replace. I, th I think this this will be fine. We'll like iterate over it. But he also makes another good point. Uh, this is class address, so we we need to make sure that there's a dot on there. Okay, and this is going to be equal to um, dollar. So Wait, just a second, Tony. Just a second. I, I, I didn't, I'm not touching anything. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Um, okay. This should be equal to dollar sign invoked with the part variable. Okay. Wait, dollar sign part? Uh, a dollar sign uh, invoked. So just like on line 12, but this time with the part variable instead of item. Okay. Um, and then now let's just say address plus equals um, well okay here's what, wait wait for me this is what I'm thinking okay we have an array now instead of adding to it we push into it so let's push in dollar sign part dot text trimmed Uh, no period there. So just dollar sign part dot text. Trying. I'm trying real hard. <laughs> so text and then on the end of that do dot trim. Okay. And then um, that, should, that should do it. And so now we'll say address is equal to address dot, dot join. Part. We'll join just like, I guess we want to join with a new line. Watch what happens. Are you ready? And so mm -hmm. like for people that were wondering what we're doing, like before we did get rid of the white space on the edges, but because this was in two parts, there's like a giant bit of white space here. Um, so I want to remove that. And what we've done should do that. Yeah, look at that. So you have street, new line, st city, or city state. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay, so we have the address. Um, I guess technically we could get the, what are these called? Are these called like cuisines? Yeah, cuisine list. I think it's genre of food. <laughs> Definitely. So we'll do a very similar thing. Let's say, um, not food genre, let's call it cuisines because that's, that's what they have it as. I like food genre more. <laughs> <laughs> food genre? <laughs> you do uh, core on the end of it like we did that one time. Wings what? core. All right, so const cuisines equals. Uh, so this will be dollar sign item dot find. Oh, no, so you can use, you can use our dollar sign item variable. So no parentheses okay. needed, yeah. Dollar sign item dot find. And I'm gonna go to the browser. Cuisine, oh, so we want a P tag with the class cuisine dash list. All right. <laughs> cool, oh, there's a question from Wordle in the chat. So uh, how do you handle items that are hidden by navigation links like next page or previous page? That would probably require another request. Right now, we're going to be simple with it, and we're only going to um, we're only going to get the the restaurants that are on the main page. Um, but typically, that's how you would do it. You would, you would have to call this function multiple times with each new page of results. So this is a p tag with the class quiz. How do you spell cuisine? C U I S. No, I think you had it wrong. Or they have it wrong. I don't know. Somebody has it wrong. <laughs> let's let's go with how they do it. 
they're they're a professional website. They should have it right, right? You you would think that, but <laughs> cuisine. Yeah, it, it, it looks like cousin with an e. It is cousin with an e. I guess it is. <laughs> I never noticed that before. <laughs> okay, um, so find cousin list. So let's <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, trim this. So we'll get rid of. Let's so do. Let's grab the text. So do dot text. Dot text. Uh huh. And then we'll uh, trim that. And then let's also. Uh, split it on commas. Uh, with, put that in quotes. Single quotes. Quotes. Single what? <laughs> single, single, single quotes for CJ. Single quotes. Cool. Um, and I'm hoping that that will that will grab each one. I think if we do like a comma space, it might like it. Let's let's see what happens. Cool. Steak. American. Chinese. Chinese. Mexican. Vegetarian. Healthy. Italian. Pizza. I think we're doing it. Um, oh, this, the pita pit. Greek. Mediterranean. Middle Eastern. Sandwiches, soups, American salads, and healthy. A lot of cousins in that family. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I like that late night is considered uh, a cuisine. The pizza joint. I like it. <laughs> Cool. So uh, I think the last thing is we need to grab, I guess we could, we could grab the Grubhub link. Maybe we don't. Maybe we do. Okay. So we want the Grubhub link, but we also want, what does this anchor tag link to? Like we want it because that will allow us to actually scrape that, that menu page. So we can select this anchor tag and grab its href. Okay. So... Let's do this. Yeah, let's do this here. Actually, we'll, because we already have that selector, let's reuse it. So um, let's say, let's call this like header is the name. And then the name is header dot text. But the, um, the link will be find the, sorry, of the header, find the a tag that's in there and grab its attribute href. Okay. <laughs> so this selects the h4 name. This grabs the text of that, but then we reuse that and then find the anchor tag that's inside of it and grab its href. Now we should also have the link. So let's throw that in here. Go. I think we've done it. Yeah. Pretty fun, huh, Tony? That's yes. pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> Okay, and then the last thing is we need the Grubhub link. Oh, that's easy enough. Class Grubhub, grab the href, because that will take us to where we can, um, um, like order order the things. Order the thing if we wanted to. Yeah. Okay. Let's do Did that. Go ahead. I was going to say, like, it is kind of crazy now. Like, like I remember there was that person, um, like, years ago uh, that was going to, like, live in their house for, like, a whole year and order food and groceries. Mm. And and everyone thought it was crazy at the time. Like, they're like, oh, this is weird. Now it's like everyone does it. <laughs> Just order everything online, work online, live online. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, the the next the next step is, like, virtual reality. So, like... You feel like you're leaving your home, but you're actually not. What was that movie that just came out? Um, Ready Player One. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just going to be like that. <laughs> okay, last last one, Tony. Grub Hub. So this will be... What's that? I'm going to do this one. Okay, so this is going to be uh, dollar sign item dot find. And it's going to be by the A tag. Uh, yeah, so we want an A tag with the class Grubhub. 
So A dot Grubhub. There you go. Grubhub. 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 <laughs> and then uh, we want to grab the href attribute. So you can just do dot ATTR. Oh, inside the same thing? Uh, after it. So very similar to how I did line 15. Just do mm -hmm. dot ATTR. Mm -hmm. Dot ATTR. Href. There you, href. There you go. Mm -hmm. And that should do it. Like, scraping is easy, right? Is there a scraping emoji? Like a little <laughs> scraper? Oh, I don't, we could find one. <laughs> but I, I still, this works because only certain places actually have a Grubhub link. Cool. I like it. Um, but we make our front end interface. We can just have like a uh, the words nope under Grubhub. <laughs> if it doesn't have it. Nope. Like if it, it, it reads like as the, undefined. You know the nope emoji. Yeah. There's the. Or or the or my, my one of my personal favorites is like the crying emoji with the tears running on the face. <laughs> cool. All right, so we've got restaurants. That was fun. Um, now we want to grab all of the menus. So. I think at this point, maybe we should set up Firebase. So like we, as we grab the menus, we like insert that data into the Firebase database. What do you think? Wait, I'm sorry, I missed that part. Um, we should hook up Firebase right now. So as we, um, um, like as we scrape each menu, we just immediately insert it into our Firebase database. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's do it. So we're going to go to the Firebase console. I'm going to hide my screen real quick because I have a lot of projects in there. People can still hear you, hear you Tony. Yeah, Firebase is through Google, right? Yeah, it is. I'm surprised Google didn't buy GitHub. They probably tried. I don't know. I read a, a shower thought today that Amazon missed an op or not Amazon, uh, Microsoft missed an opportunity instead of using uh, Cortana to use Clippy, like resurrect Clippy. Oh. <laughs> but I think I think so many like they've got to know that like people just hated Clippy. It became oh. this like just hated thing. Oh, they do. Uh, people can see your face now, Tony. Okay. <laughs> um, Stop picking my nose. Yeah, don't do that. We're live on the internet. Um, so uh, this is the Firebase console. I just created a project called Menu Items. Um, Firebase has a lot of things built in. They have database. So they have uh, Firebase Firestore, which is currently in beta, but it's it's like the big new thing that has sort of replaced real-time. Maybe it hasn't replaced real-time. There might be a, a case for using Firebase real-time or a case for using Cloud Firestore. Um, I think we'll just use Cloud Firestore. So I'm going to click Create Database. I'm going to hide my screen. So because we're using this database, I guess technically we're going to use it in the front end and the back end. But initially, I'm going to hide all of my connection info so nobody tries to hack the database. And then when we deploy, we won't allow inserting anything new. So my screen is hidden. I'm going to create a database. Setting up security rules. The password is password. <laughs> Don't tell them, Tony. Um, OK, so we have our database. Now, I guess you really you can't really see my key just yet. But let's, I think, I think there's an NPM package for Firebase. I think you just do firebase.firestore. Like, if we just search for Firestore. Is Firestore new? Like, it's pretty new. It's, it's fairly new, yeah. It's currently in beta. Um, it's basically similar to real-time, but has more features and is maybe more scalable. I don't know all the details. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't heard of it before. I haven't really worked with Firebase that much lately. Hmm. I think Firebase... I, I should probably just look at the docs, but I think if we bring in Firebase... Maybe we'll use auth. Let's search for Firebase Firestore. Actually, let's just search for the documentation of like how to get this thing set up. 
getting started with Cloud Firestore. Can you mute your mic for, for just a second, Tony? Cool. That was too easy, thank you. Um, so we want to get started on the web. So for the web, we'll install Firebase. We can then require in Firestore, and then we set it up. That's easy. I like that. Um, I'm curious, what's the latest version of Firebase? Because it says it wants 5.3. Yeah, I'm just going to do an NPM install of Firebase. Is that the most stable version, or? Well, I mean, it's a. This is known as the uh, minor version. So it's in the docs. They're telling me five point three, but on here it's five point five. I'm just going to install the latest one. So, in our server folder, we can do an npm install of whoa, Firebase. <laughs> hey, Randy! Welcome to the stream. <laughs> Um, okay, so we installed Firebase, and if we look at their docs, we need to require it in, we need to initialize it, and then we need to create the connection to the database. So we will do just that. So here's what we'll do, Tony. We'll create a new file called uh, fire, let's call it just db, db.js. And then we'll do all of this stuff. So we'll bring in Firebase. We'll bring in Firebase Firestore. And actually, these need to be single quotes. And then we'll have to do the initialize app thing. We'll have to go get our keys. We'll do this thing, which creates the Firestore uh, DB. And then let's. Let's export this DB variable from this file, so that way we can just require it in the other file. So uh, do module.exports equals DB. OK. Are we going to have to hide the uh, API key? We will, yeah. And so uh, I'm showing people how we set this thing up. But I'll hide my screen. I'll put my keys in here. And then we will never um, show this file again until we've locked down the, the security rules. Uh, so just do module.exports equals DB. A uh, question from Avi12, <laughs> uh, when do I use, um, why do I use single quotes and not double? It's just a preference. Um, JavaScript supports either. And I've, I've actually used the Airbnb ESLint config quite a bit, and they prefer single quotes over double quotes. So I just stick with that. OK, so that's our DB. And then in this file, we should be able to require it in. And then like at this point, Instead of pushing into the array, we just like insert it into the Firebase database. Sounds good. Cool. Um, so here we'll just import it in. OK. And then now I will hide my screen and replace this stuff with the real info. So no one look. Hide. You can still see my screen, can't you, Tony? Yeah, I was just talking to Maddie. OK. <laughs> just making sure. Um, so we've got that. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're going to throw all this here. We're going to convert these double quotes. That's great. Close the file. Never open that file again, OK, Tony? Open what file? Exactly. OK. <laughs> so technically, we have a connection to the database. Oh, let me, here, I'm going to hide my screen again, because I believe, yes, it, the info is still in the browser. So let me close that. Cool. And so now, if we go to the documentation, we can find how to add and manage data. Add data. I think so there's um, you can choose a collection you can choose a document in that collection I think there's a way to push 
Oh, there's an add. Yes, yeah, so this is what we want. So db.collections with um, um, some collection name. We could do like restaurants. And then you say add, and you just it will just add that thing. So that's cool. Um, this is pretty much what we want. So let's copy that. And I wonder, so one, one thing about this is later on, we, we might want to re reference a restaurant and all of its menu items. So we want to reference a restaurant by ID. So um, this automatically generates an ID. So add a new doc document with a generated ID and then later set the data. So behind the seeds, add and document etc. completely equivalent. So you can use whichever is more convenient. I think we want to do this because this will give us an ID and then we can set its data. So let's see. Um, I think, I don't know. Oh, someone said, make sure to clear your clipboard. My clipboard is cleared. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think this, so the, the main thing is like, I want the restaurant to have an ID. So that way, when we get the menu items for that restaurant, it has the given restaurant ID. Mm. Let's, let's just play around with this. Let's see what happens. So if, like right about here, we run this code. And so this will be like new restaurant reference. And we want to tap into a collection. In this case, we want this collection to be um, restaurants. So go ahead and, uh, Tony, I haven't let you type in a while. I apologize, but throw the word restaurants right there. Mm -hmm. And then instead of setting data, we're just going to set restaurant. So like we'll create this document and then we'll set it to be restaurant. Like sing single thing yeah, from so that, that array? Yeah, so the variable there. And so I will do this. But what I'm curious about is this new restaurant ref, this, if it has an ID associated with it. Because if it does, I want to set that on what we're setting. So let's see what happens. Are you ready, Tony? Yes. Database, go. Oh, god. <laughs> Oh, man. No, it's fine. So, um, oh, it's logging a bunch of some, some stuff. So it has dollar sign key. That's a document key. I think that's the whole thing. But let's, let's see what happened. Did we actually get data in our database? Refresh. There's restaurants, and there are two of them. <laughs> so I think, like, something aired out. But... Um, the data is in there, so that's good. Well, we're probably we definitely want to do like a dot then or something like that because this is returning a promise. Um, so that's cool. So someone is uh, Mayur is mentioning pass ID into docs into doc. Yeah, so you know what? Let's just generate an ID ourselves because that that should work. So there's this wonderful GUID UUID generation library. I think this is the one. Let's do this. So we'll generate an ID before we insert it, so that way we know what the ID is. So let's install this package. All right, do an npm install of UUID.
Cool. Oh, and there is a question in the chat from uh, Kispa. Would Cheerio be able to scrape JavaScript heavy websites made with React Review? Probably not. So uh, yes, that's right, Tony. You'd hit enter. Um, so Cheerio is really only good for like server rendered websites, basically websites that when they load in the browser, all of the HTML is already there. Um, if a front end framework is doing the business, then you need something that actually runs the JavaScript on the page. So for that, there's stuff like Puppeteer. Um, but if a web page is using something like uh, React or Vue, it's probably calling an API. So if you inspect the network traffic, you could just call that API instead. Um, so yeah. Oh, Sergey is mentioning, why don't we use the ID of the restaurant scraper? That makes too much sense. <laughs> let's, let's see if there is an ID in here. Um, six seven nine nine PF chains. Okay, got the item. I'm just trying to see if there's any like unique identifying information in here about the list item. I mean, technically, we could do this six seven nine nine PF chains. Let's see if the one below it has the same ID. Yeah, six seven nine. Oh, they all have. Wait, this is the exact same one. That's why <laughs> it's listed twice. We probably want to get rid of duplicates. But then if we use the ID, then um, we wouldn't be adding duplicates, which would be good. 8769 Red Robin. And then this one is 8780 Red Robin. So what if, what if we just plucked out this right here and then that is our ID? I think I like that. The href? Um, so, but uh, Sergi is recommending data master list ID. Where is that? Let's search for it. Oh, hey, I love it. Awesome. So we so, don't even need to make new IDs if they already have them. Exactly. And so that way um, we would have a way of referencing it by ID. Data master list dash ID. So one thing we can do is we can, uh, we already have this anchor tag. We can just extract off this uh, attribute value, uh, data master list ID. Okay. So let's do this. So we have, we want to grab ID. Actually, these both need to be cons. And really, we want to store this other thing in uh, a variable. Let's call this uh, anchor. And that's going to be, let me paste this while I have it. So our anchor tag is going to be finding the anchor tag, right? And then we grab the href. But then here, so here's what we need to do, Tony. We need to say on that anchor tag, we want to grab the attribute. So do dot ATTR. And then in single quotes, pass in what I have there on the right, data dash master list dash dash ID. Awesome. And so that should be the ID. And then now, if we say the document at that I, um, ID, it should, if there are any duplicates, it'll like replace it. And then we'll push it in. Okay, so here's what I'll do. I'm gonna delete this entire document store. Delete all documents, go. Okay. Um, I think dot set returns a promise. Let's double check. It does. We could dot then it. 
So let's actually... Let's just try this. All right, Tony, you can do the honors. Hit enter. <laughs> ah! Function document set called with invalid data. We need to, I guess we need to make sure, before we do this, we need to make sure that we're actually getting the IDs. Let's do that. Yeah, I was going to say, like, do you think, like, <laughs> the way we're calling it makes it act weird? Yeah, we, we may have messed up. Let's see. Yeah, so the ID is a string, so that's good. Um, but let's double check. Yeah, so we should be able to do document at the ID. Maybe it doesn't like... IDs that are, I mean, it's a string, but it's all numbers. Did this try to put anything in there? Oh, so it worked for one, so that's good. But then the one immediately after that failed. Let's see what happened. Whole lot of scroll. Oh because they have the same ID, I think. So I think there's a way of, um, if the document does not exist, it will be created. If the document does exist, its contents will be overwritten unless you specify that the data should be merged into the existing document. Um, it should just overwrite it. I think. Um, actually, let's make sure the data we have in here. So Cuisines is an array, Grubhub. Maybe it doesn't like that Grubhub is undefined. Hmm. Let's do this. If Grubhub. Restaurant.Grubhub. Whoa. Equals Grubhub. I think maybe it didn't like that that was undefined. Let's just see what happens. All right. Moment of truth. Get all those restaurants. Something's happening. <laughs> Whoa! Look at it, Tony! <laughs> it worked. It's work. And it's like inserting all of them in real time. Oh my goodness. Cool. I love it. So um, one thing I'm thinking of, though, so even though we have the address, let's also just put the city in the state because in the future we might parse or like we might scrape different um, um, different cities and states. So we just let's just throw like city state on there. <laughs> and um, now if we run this again, Really, like honestly, we should we should keep track of when all of this is done. So, here's what I want to do. Um, outside of this each, let's create a variable called promises and set that equal to an array. So, yeah, we'll have an array of promises, and then when we do the set. We'll actually push this into promises. So here you can just say promises dot, dot push. And then push in, like, I'll help you out here, just basically this whole thing, because that's going to do the setting. Um, and then afterwards, we'll do a promise all. So do capital promise dot all. And then pass in promises. And we'll actually, I think we can, are we, I think we can await this. This is an async await. So let's await that and then log done. Done. All right, let's try again. Boo. Well, I mean, <laughs> we did get an error, but stuff should be like updating. We should see it like, like if we look at, this one, yeah, so it has city and state, cool. 
cool. This is too cool. Wow, wow. Done! I, you can't, I guess you can't see my face, Tony, but I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> That's pretty awesome, though. Like, it's like this nice little uh, repo. Yeah, okay, so we have all of these restaurants now. Now comes the fun stuff. Let's get those restaurant items. Um, do you feel like you need a break, Tony? I was going to say, like, I think we could take, like, a, a five or ten minute break. Yeah, let's do, let's do a ten minute break. We we'll use the restroom, grab some water, but when we come back restaurant items um and so before you go tony just mute your mute your mic yeah 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 um, I'll, and, I'll turn off my webcam too yeah and uh and while we're breaking i'll catch up on the chat and say hello and stuff like that and k weekbound has a good point like is my break timer up for whatever reason timeout has not been popping up okay <laughs> So we'll take a break, and actually, while we're breaking, um, I'll catch up on the chat really quick. I'll try to. There's a lot of chat. And then um, I'll go get some water and be right back. So, so many wonderful people on watching today. Welcome. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, so... There was some chat about Ready Player One. Um, it was definitely um, like a nostalgia thing. Like there's so many references to like so many things. Like I, I listened to the audiobook, but I imagine reading it would be like really hard to get through because in Ready Player One, there was just so many references to things. You're basically just like reading reference after reference after reference. Hmm. Oh, and Linus is asking, I think you changed your name to Mr. Techman because I just saw your answer. What do you think of the thumbnail I made you? Um, it's awesome. I, I set it as the, the video thumbnail on YouTube. And Ed is asking, by the way, where is the break timer? Here it is. I, like, for some reason, it's not popping up. Like, um, I have it enabled, but, yeah, I, it's not. Hopefully, it'll pop up after this. <laughs> <laughs> Yolo Pookie, CJ, your grooming game is on point. I appreciate that. <laughs> and appreciate it, uh, Sergi, for pointing out that each each restaurant actually has an ID. So that'll really come in handy when we're scraping the menu items, because when we put the menu item in, we can tie it back to a restaurant ID. So that way we can like link to the restaurant next to the menu item. Definitely. Uh, Om uh, Prakash Patel asks, isn't web scraping illegal? Um, it depends. So I think there are some other people mentioning it in the chat, but um, you'd have to read the site's terms of service. Um, you need to make sure that they allow things like that. Um, we don't plan on deploying this website, so we're not going to like be making any money off of it or anything like that. It was just like a fun little hobby project. Um, but it, it definitely you definitely want to read the terms of service on a website before you do this. Yeah, and Mr. Technic. <laughs> Your thumbnail is awesome, yes. And actually, yeah, I'll show it really quick. It should be on the YouTube page. YouTube. Oh, no, that's live. Stop it. <laughs> um, Vue.js Abstravaganza. Look at that. Um, so, oh, actually, is that new? Oh, when you hover over it, there's a video preview? I've never seen that before. But I have this GitHub repo called uh, Community Contributions. Contributions, that one. And um, I don't have a lot of issues open right now, but I plan I, when I have the time to add them. But basically, if you want to create a thumbnail for my videos, if you want to create timestamps, a, a lot of my live, live streams tend to be very long. So people have created live uh, timestamps where you can just click through to go through the video. Um, like Vue.js Abstravaganza actually has some that were contributed by Spibo, I think, or maybe these already existed. 
these might have been contributed by Bob, Bob's Paradox before I had this repo. Um, but the idea is for like a really long video, we add these timestamps and then you can just go in and like skip forward into the video. Um, so this repo exists. If you want to create a thumbnail, if you want to create timestamps, you can add them here and the community would definitely appreciate it. So thank you, Mr. Technic and Linus for, for doing that. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Technic, we have we have over a hundred viewers. I think this is the most that a live stream has ever had here on the Coding Garden. So welcome, welcome everyone. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> uh, what were they talking about inside of VS Code? Oh, the font. I see. Yeah, uh, Wartail is asking, do I have any Java or Android experience? Only dabbling. I've never actually published an app to the store, but I've built like basic apps just to build, um, just to see what it was like to build a mobile app. <laughs> and we are building a web scraper. So the idea is, if you're just tuning in, uh, at this point we have scraped all of the restaurants on this page and we put them in a Firebase database. So we have the address, the city, the cuisines, the ID, the name, so there's Hooters, um, and then also the link to the menu. You should probably name that menu link, oh well. Um, but then the menu is what we're gonna scrape next. So we'll get all of the menu items, and then we can search across all of these menus and um, find all restaurants that have like a chicken sandwich or something like that. <laughs> that's, the, that's the goal. And hello, everyone from Coding Train. Choo choo. choo. <laughs> yeah, my year from 20 to 30 viewers to 100. Definitely. And I think like weekends are a really good time to stream as well. Like typically, late, like lately on the Kata streams, there's roughly like 20 or 30 people watching, but come one, come all. <laughs> See you later, Mr. Technic. Have a good night. Uh, John Flores is asking, can we see your URL variable? Do you mean for this? It's, it's basically, uh, it's parsing this web page. So if you look here, we're, we're creating a URL based on the state and the city. So you should be able to pass in any state or city and um, parse all the restaurants on that homepage. The homepage itself is all of the popular restaurants. There's probably another way to get all of them, but we're not doing that just yet. Yeah, people are telling me video preview has been a thing for a while. <laughs> I never noticed it. It's pretty cool. <laughs> oh yeah, and Big asks uh, a valid question. If you make too many requests, isn't that considered a denial of service? Definitely. So to get all of these restaurants, that was a single request. When we get the menu item data, we're gonna have to be careful because we don't wanna get our IP address blocked and we, want, we probably want to scrape like one menu per second. I don't know, what is 500 seconds? Okay, we could let it scrape like one menu per, like wait one second before getting the next. That'll, we'll just let it sit there for like eight minutes. Um, but yes, we will have to be careful when we're making hundreds of requests. <laughs> Christian says, today the garden, tomorrow the world. Yeah, so uh, Sean is asking, um, are you gonna go through setting up a dot file for storing API credentials? Um, we haven't, but we probably should, because I do wanna push this code up to GitHub. So right now, all of my, well actually, like technically, once we get this set up, um, I will, I would, I'm just gonna publish my credentials because it's a Firebase database, and those things are public on the web anyways, but um, we could, I could show, I've, we've done it in, in, old, in, separate, in older videos as well. <laughs> uh, Randy says, I told you so. Do you mean like the hundreds of viewers? <laughs> uh, and hello gaming, but not really. Uh, they ask, uh, who is Tony, by the way? Tony is a longtime friend. Uh, we've known each other since like fifth grade. We lived, we were roommates for a while. We had a punk rock band in high school. Um, yeah, we go way back. And he's been learning to code over the last year or so, so I've been helping him out. <laughs> 
Uh, Alka says, Coding Garden is a favorite stop on the coding train. Thank you. <laughs> All right, um, I'm going to take just a five-minute break to go grab some water, but we will be back very soon, and don't go anywhere. Actually, let me, let me do this.
Hello! Say hello, Tony. What's going on, guys? Tony has put on his hat. What did you call that hat, Tony? It's a pork hat from Star Wars. Oh, okay. I thought you said your Justin Bieber hat. Well, I have a Justin Bieber hat. Uh, it's like <laughs> a purple baseball cap, but... Okay. Yeah, this is a pork hat. Awesome. Um, yes, we're back. We took a break. We stretched. We drank water. We're ready to write some more code. Um, let me do this. So, if you're just tuning in, let's review what we have built so far. So, we're, we're building a web scraper. What we've done is we have scraped all of the top 500 restaurants in Columbus, Ohio, on this web page. We have their name, their cuisine types, their location, and a link to Grubhub if they have a link. So, we're using Fetch to just request the HTML, and then we're using a library called Cheerio to pluck out all of the things inside. So, we're grabbing the name, the address, the cuisines, the Grubhub link, all of that good stuff. And then we're inserting it into a Firebase database. So what we did was we created this uh, Firestore database, and now we have all 500 of those restaurants in our database with that information. The next step will be to scrape each menu of all of these, all of these restaurants. And, and the end goal is to be able to search for chicken sandwich and find every menu that has a chicken sandwich on it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh yeah, and so there was a question in the chat. Have I done any Python? I haven't done it on stream, but at my last job, I used to write quite a bit of Python. So um, in the near future. Oh, my break timer's working, yes! All right, we're just getting back, but take a quick stretch. Do one of these. I learned I learned this one watching a cooking show. Like chefs, like chefs that stand up for like hours all day, they do this one. Ugh. Yeah, I'm pretty okay. sure my legs are dead. <laughs> All the standing I do. Uh, yeah, yeah, like your job requires standing, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, like I, I, so like on my part-time gig where I'm, I'm doing like electronic stuff, I, uh, um, guy I work with, he's like, I like standing. I'm like, I stand enough at my other job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ran, and hello, Ran, welcome to the stream, says it's like const heaven or hell. Yeah, there's a lot of const variables. We got arrow functions, we got async await. We're, uh, we're modern JavaScripters. Const ranch up in here. It's what? Raise, it's const ranch. Const ranch? Okay. Yeah, raising our const crops <laughs> to be good, good variables. I'm gonna stop you. Time. I'm gonna stop you while you're ahead, Tony. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we have the restaurants. Uh, yeah. Now we want to get menus. Um, so that's great. Let's create a function to get a menu. Um, and let's let's actually first we'll like inspect a menu. So, um, let's get a nice like mom and pop shop. We don't want to grab one of these. Um, um, Maybe that could be a thing. If it, if the restaurant is listed more than once, it, it just automatically declares it a chain. Oh. Put it under the stretch ideas, but I like it. No chains. <laughs> I mean, you, you might want to go to a chain. Um, yeah, 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 but like filter through chain restaurants. Chain. Okay, cool. But um, so let's do like coffee and tea, Cameron's American Bistro. I don't know. Do you have any like local favorite restaurants that aren't chains? Yes. Like near you? What are yes. they called? What's well, called? not near me, but um, one of my favorite is uh, Pierogi Mountain, also uh, known as Cafe Bourbon Street. I don't know if it's on here. Is it in Columbus? It is. So okay. let's see if we can uh, search ser it. Yeah, search for it. Uh, pierogi. I always misspell pierogi. Do I have control? Uh, you should try. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there it was. Oh, ooh, ooh. Uh, click find menus. Nice! Click on it. Oh, you can actually get on Grubhub. <laughs> yeah, this is like my favorite, favorite, uh, place in Columbus. Nice. Okay, look, yeah, we'll, we'll test this one to scrape it. So, uh, this one has a menu. It has um, lots of different pierogies that are very decently priced. I like that. Oh, yeah. Is this like the punk rock bar? <laughs> too? Uh, so let's do they have beer on the menu. So we got entrees, add-ons. Okay. You buy, can buy the cook a beer. Buy the cook a beer, $2. You don't get any food, but you get the satisfaction of knowing that you bought a stranger a cold one. That's awesome. <laughs> she just um, called that in one day. <laughs> okay, so... We want to scrape this, and 
there, there's something very, so let's look at the source of this web page. There's something very interesting about this web page. So we're going to look at the source. And you may notice there's this script tag here. And there's this beautiful JSON object with the restaurant location, the coordinates, the has menu with array of menu items. Like, we're going to have to do very little scraping here because all of this stuff exists. What say you, Tony? I'm gonna have to get pierogies. <laughs> so, but, but but so I actually looked this up earlier, and what this is called it's LD JSON, and so a lot of websites do this for uh, search engine optimization. Um, I think I found it on yeah introduction to stru structured data. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, so Google search works hard to understand the content of a page, and you can help us by providing explicit clues about the meaning of a page. So this is actually a standard where a website will embed basically some JSON data about the page so that in search results, it can create like cards of menu items and cards of, and use that, that data and parse it very easily. But this is like a scraper's dream because we could literally just reach into this script tag and then parse it as JSON, and we have all of the menu items. Um, Technically, I believe we still could do like the manual scraping that we're used to. Yeah, because like there's list item that have that are called like menu items. There's like the price, but this is this is beautiful, right? I'm excited. <laughs> cool. Um, let's see. So we can grab this. We'll actually get to see the. Um, um, we'll get to see it in the console to like see what we're actually getting back. But there is menu and then main. So like this restaurant only has one main menu, but let's let's go to a restaurant that has like multiple menus. I don't know what's Bear Burger. Oh, they have main menu, El Vaquero. Um, let's just search for brunch. They typically have like a brunch, oh, like a a brunch menu and a oh so so that's the thing you can't search for for brunch um i basically just want to find a restaurant that has like a breakfast menu and uh like a dinner menu let's go to ice cream friendlies yeah so main and then breakfast right two different things if we look at the source of this page its application json has um has menu and um, there's so, their main right there. Yeah, so there's main, but if, I'm sure if we scroll down, we'll find um, like, oh, not that. We want like name uh, breakfast. Yeah, so those are two different menus in that array, and then each of them has sections and then menu items. Okay, we'll we'll have to parse this thing. We can we can get down into it, but. Um, Let's let's do it. So if we look back at the data that we stored for a restaurant, so a restaurant has um, this link here, but that's not the full URL. That's just the end of the URL. But we need to put um, allmenus.com on that on that URL in front of it. But let's just do a test here. Let's create a function that requests the menu page and then like grabs that JSON data out of it. So comment that out for now. So very similar to how we did get restaurants, we want to create a function called uh, get menu. Um, and we can let's do it as a like, like we did before. So we'll do a const and then set that equal to an arrow function. Um, but how do we want to do this? Do we want to pass in I see you're taking the hat off, Tony. It's getting a little hot. <laughs> okay. Uh, do we want to pass in the URL to make the request against? Do we want to pass in the ID in our Firebase database and then look up its menu? Um, I. Th what do you, what you think? the ID? We could do the ID. Then we could look up the menu. Yeah, that, that would make sense. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so we're going to do our new restaurant ref. Um, 
Well, right? no, so not, no, let's just call the parameter like ID. So like we're literally going to just pass in the ID. Mm -hmm. And then um, we'll be able to call this like git menu for the thing with ID. And then like, what is this? Hmm, let's keep that open just because of that. But if we look at the source of the pierogi menu web page, um, it probably has data ID in there somewhere. Let's search for this, because I know this. Oh, no. Well, that I, I guess technically that will be the ID, but so that. So and actually, we'll, we'll pass this in as a string. So first, we'll need to like get a restaurant from Firebase DB by ID. Then um, make request to menu page. That's that's the stuff we're gonna have to do. So um, let's get the restaurant from the Firebase DB. If we look back at the docs, we want to query data. We want to get data. We want to get a document. Um, custom object? Yeah, I think this should work. We just do dot get. So, very similar to this. We'll put it in, and then we'll um, do some stuff. So, um, change that to a const. But, okay, so we need to change the collection to be the collection that we were inserting into before. So, so the collection name in there. That's the uh, new restaurant ref, right? Well, just restaurants, because we're referencing- oh, restaurants, the, right. Yeah, we're ref referencing the restaurants collection in Firebase, cool. And then the document that we want is just that ID, so pass in the ID. And then um, we should be able to get it by awaiting that, but then we'll need to make this an async function. And then doc.data is the actual data. Now literally, like actually we could call this rest our aunt. Did I spell that right? And then we'll just log the rest our rot. Okay, so when we call this function, it should reach into our Firebase database, grab that specific restaurant, and then just log it to the console. So hopefully this gives us back pierogi mountain. Oh, you know what? It might not have been it might not be in our database. Because it might not have been under popular restaurants. Oh yeah, that's right. Let's see. Undefined. Ugh. Oh no. <laughs> so I mean, technically what we could do is um, like if it doesn't exist, then go get the restaurant. Oh well, I think I think what we're gonna have to do is um, for now we'll just use an existing one that we know we have. In the future, we can add this stuff on. So like, let's say we actually get the link to the menu, and um, then we can just immediately request the menu. But that, but that's that's for a future thing like. What like maybe we check if a, a restaurant exists and if it doesn't, we add their menu items. Yeah, I can't. And you could like look for it and find that it. Yeah. Okay, this is a different restaurant, not the database. Yeah. So now it's going to be more something like this. So like URL is going to be um, the first part here, and then we need to throw in the link on the end of that. So. The idea is, if we're requesting this, it'll request that specific page. Um, and then to test it, we'll pass this in there. Actually, let me move that up there. OK. So this should get, and actually, 
if we look in our Firebase database, we are storing the leading slash, so I think I need to get rid of that slash there. OK. So now let's make a fetch to this URL to get the menu information. OK, so we'll do a fetch, invoke it, pass in URL. Um, and then, and then, actually, we'll await it. So um, create a variable called response. <laughs> and that should be await uh, fetch. So just put the word await there. Awesome. And then on the next line, uh, and I think, wait, we were spelled response wrong. Re responsey. Cool. On the next line, we'll say body will be equal to awaiting response.txt. Invoke that, yes, but we have an extra period. This first one shouldn't be there, so do that. And then uh, just like before, we're going to load that body into, uh, into Cheerio to give us back something that we can query. And there's my break timer. Let's take a quick stretch. Mm. I'm glad that that's popping up now. <laughs> Um, okay, now we'll create that dollar sign variable. Tony? Yeah, I'm sorry, I zoned out there. I'm <laughs> thinking about pierogies or something. We're, we're losing him. Okay, uh, so. Yeah, we're probably at about a four or five right now. Out of 10? Wait, out of zero. Out of 10. Out of 10, yeah. yeah so yeah. halfway, halfway. Okay. Or was it eight? I, I don't remember how many it was. There are seven different images. But yeah, and actually, if people are wondering what we're referencing, we, we haven't been using this, but we created this website where we could put our current status during the live stream, and you could like see our health at the bottom of the screen. Um, Last we left, I was dead. <laughs> and I was like, so Tony's nose starts to bleed as he dies, or as he loses <laughs> energy, and I just start to fade into transparency. Like, it's because my, my brain gets foggy. Like, I'm still happy and excited to be here, but it's, like, harder to think and code the longer we do this. Okay. Um, create a variable called dollar sign. Const money. Cash money, and that will be equal to Cheerio dot load body. Dot load body. Okay. So now things get interesting. So if we remember, on this web page there is a script tag with a type of application LD JSON. So what we want to do is we want to select this script tag, grab the inner HTML, and then parse that as JSON because this is a giant JSON object, right? Do, are we going to parse that just same as any other like API JSON type thing? Um, well, yeah, yeah, we'll see. So basically, at that point, then we can interact with it. We can say like dot has menu dot like iterate over menus and grab each menu item. Okay. So here's what we'll do. So we'll say the let's call this like raw raw JSON. We're going to do a selector. Say we want the script tag. We want the script tag that has the attribute LDJSON. And I'm curious, is there more than one on his page? There are two. So technically, we really should just grab the first one. So we want to grab the first one. And then we want to wrap this whole thing in a selector and grab its HTML. So this should reach into the page, grab the first script with that uh, application LD JSON, and then grab the inner HTML of it. Um, now, Tony, please just log out raw JSON. <laughs> cool. 
Cool. And if we've done this correctly, we should see some raw JSON in the console. So I think, so we have getting restaurants disabled right now. Right now we're just getting the, the pierogi mountain menu. All right. Wait, I thought we were still having like an issue with it because it wasn't a popular restaurant. Uh, well, because we're just simply passing oh, yeah, 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 yeah. in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so because we're simply passing in the URL, then we don't need to know uh, the thing. One, thing. one thing we should do though is like, we'll pass in the ID and the URL. Because what I'm thinking is, um, oh, sorry. ID and link. Because what I'm thinking is we can actually parse all the popular restaurants and then insert them as we go um, and pass in ID. So that way each menu item gets stored with the restaurant ID. So on any given menu item, we can link back to the restaurant. Okay. Um, but I think this should do it, Tony. We're going to get a bunch of raw JSON in the console. Hit enter. Remember that people can still see you. So act happy. <laughs> I know. I, I'm happy to be here. I'm just like kind of. It's getting. It's getting at that point. We're like two hours in now. Yeah. Um. And look at this. We got. We got JSON. So. Um, oh my god. Right. So, but right now it's technically uh, a string. It's one giant string. Right. But if we want to turn it into JSON, so let's call this like data. Uh, we can just do JSON dot parse. So do uh, all caps JSON. JSON dot, dot parse. parse. And raw then, JSON. yeah, pass in raw JSON. That's so cool. And then now, if we log data, it should be like syntax highlighted and stuff because Node knows that it's a, it's actually a JSON object. Yeah, look at that. So, Ooh. yeah, so <laughs> we've got uh, address, geo coordinates. That's actually pretty cool. We could technically, like, if we store that on the restaurant, then we could show it on a map later on. Yeah, you could act like pot like or like when you search the restaurant like a the Google image of the map or the restaurant pops up in the corner. Yeah. Okay, and then we specifically want the has menu property. <laughs> so if it has a menu, then we'll like we need to iterate over that to um, get all of the items in it. Okay, so we'll say um, if Say if data dot has menu. Data dot has menu. Mm -hmm. So if it has a menu, we're gonna parse it. Else, no menu found. And we'll just log like the ID and the uh, the link. This is coding garden. We need an emoji in there. Okay, go for it. <laughs> How do I bring? It? You're gonna have to help me on your computer. There you go. Do the, uh, where's that crying emoji? Scroll down. It's the uh, one with like the tears and it just looks like it's going, wait, wait, no. This, this one? Wait, click it, pop it up. Yes, that is the one. Wait, oh, there it is. <laughs> that is my favorite emoji. Cool, okay. Uh, no menu found. If it does have a menu, then has... Well, we probably want to do has menu and the length of the menu is greater than zero. So if data has menu, because it's an array, and has menu dot length is greater than zero, now we're going to iterate over has menu to get access to each individual menu in there. So... Um, let's do uh, data dot has menu dot for each. And this is gonna get the so create a variable called menu and then do like a fat arrow function. <laughs> uh, and we'll do uh, curly braces here. And then menu itself is an object, and it has a property called has menu section. So we'll say um, if menu dot has menu section. And has menu section dot length is greater than zero. 
Now we're going to inter iterate over the has menu section. And actually, let's right for now, let's just log it out to see what we get. So now instead of logging like the top level item, well, we should log out all of the, yes, <laughs> all of the menu item. Oh, interesting, there's an add-ons. Okay, so there's the, um, for has menu section, there's the pierogies, there's entrees, and there's add-ons. So each one of those is like a subsection of the menu that we then need to iterate over to get the menu items. Right, like it would be like uh, breakfast or soup or whatever. Yeah. Okay, so now <laughs> let's iterate over menu.has menu .has menu section. So do a menu.has menu section dot for each. So that would be something that actually I think that we should technically like be able to parse over um, like even the names of the categories because sometimes there might be a category that says say sandwiches or something and it's like the items themselves may not be called sandwich or even say sandwich in the description. Definitely. So technically we could search the, the section name as well. Yeah, like the section, like literally every single part of the menu. Yeah. To see like if I can find that item. Because maybe like that could be another thing too is like I want something with an ingredient, right? Mm. Like the ingredient is in say like a – it's probably in the description or something like that. Right, right. But I'm just saying, like, but that that being said, like, I can think of like restaurants that I've been to where it'll say, like, let's say under the pierogies, you know, uh, it might not be like the, the word pierogi might not be in the name. Right. Yeah. Definitely. So I think what what we'll do is we'll um, we'll put the name of the menu section in the object itself that we're going to store in the database. So mm -hmm. that way, like every menu item has its, uh, like it knows what restaurant it belongs to, it knows what menu section it belongs to. So that way you, you can query across that stuff as well. Okay, so we need to do menu.hasMenu section for each section. And then um, now there's another has menu item. So to, if, if section dot has menu item, I think it is. So uh, menu item, we'll look back. Yeah, so it has menu item and uh, menu dot has uh, uh, inside of, so inside of the parentheses, sorry. Uh, section dot has menu item dot length is greater than zero. <laughs> oh, and hello, Mirchan, welcome to the stream. Um, you did miss your own kata, but it was really fun, and I thank you very much for suggesting it. <laughs> okay, so if we have that, now we're going to iterate over the menu items. So let's do section dot has menu item dot for each. And let's call this item. And then we'll create like a nice little arrow function. So like this. And then let's just log the item right there uh, inside the for each. Yeah. Okay, we're on our way. Oh, did we? We might have um, might have ca just called something wrong. Oh, has menu item dot length. That's why. Ah. Uh. Okay. Yes. Oh yeah. There All right. Are. So we got the menu items, um, and these things have a name, a description, uh, offers, which will be like how much they cost. That's awesome. I think we can just put this thing directly in Firebase, but we'll also store the restaurant ID, the menu section name, like the menu name and the menu section name, so we can query across that. See, this already is would be cool because like I don't know if like. Uh, Pierogi Mountain would come up if you looked up vegan restaurants. And there's oh, like right. a bunch of vegan options. Like it might. I I don't know for sure. But right. being able yeah. to see this stuff in there, that's awesome. Okay. So at this point we have the item, but I think we want to add a few properties to it. So we want to say like item dot um 
like menu name, mm -hmm. and that should be menu dot. The category name? Well, so we have to like go several levels deep here. Let's actually look back on here. Because if we look at a, uh, yeah, so this is menu dot name. So this will just be, this will just say like main. So that will say it's on the main menu. And then we also want um, menu section name. And that Which should be, be like the item type. Well, that, yeah, so it'll be like pierogies or sandwiches or drinks. And so this should be mm -hmm. section dot name. And I think that's all we have. So we have menu, then we have section, and then the item itself has, already has all of its info associated with it. Um, we probably also want to do like item dot restaurant ID, and that should be equal to the ID that we're passing in here. Um, okay, let's just log it out. Let's see what we get. Yeah, so menu name. Yeah, so add-ons, entrees, it has the restaurant ID. Um, one thing we might do is, I mean, we're technically duplicating data, but this thing does have the coordinates. So it might be nice to show on a map, like, technically if we put these coordinates on a, on the restaurant itself, then we could just query that. Um, Maybe that's what we do. Like when we get back the data, we update that restaurant in the database with its coordinates. Let's do that. And then, well, because it might not exist. Never mind. For a later time. I don't know. Uh, well, actually, let's just put it. Let's just put it on the. Um, on the item itself. We're two hours in. We got to finish soon. So, item dot geo equals uh, data dot geo. Think. So if we look at it. This is yeah. And so now, everything should have like that's that's where that specific menu item is on, <laughs> on, the, on the map. I like that. Yeah, like you know exactly where the caramelized onions are. <laughs> I mean, technically, they're all at the restaurant, but... Right, but I mean, like, yeah, even more technically, they'd have their own specific geolocation within the restaurant. Yeah. Um, Alka is making a good point. Uh, we might care about the HTML entities in the text. So, yeah, so this has that. Um, I think we can handle that on the front end. Um, we haven't by even using... got the front end stuff. It's going to be easy. We'll be done in, like, 10 minutes. <laughs> I always say that. Um, I guess technically, yeah, let's let's parse it before we put it in the database. So we want to do this for name and description and um, probably on et everything. So there is um, decode URI, is it, you, let me double check. So let's say we have something like this and we want to turn that back into like valid, like not encoded. Um, I don't think it's a URI component. We might have to find another one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Christian, famous last words. They usually are. Um, <laughs> 12 hours later. Yeah. Just have these big burly beards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, let's, let's, let's do it. I think there's a way to like HTML decode in JavaScript. It might just be decode. <laughs> uh, unescape. Let's try that one. Hmm. Still, the codes we want them ampersands. You have to create a DOM parser. Hmm. There's no mm. method. That's why I'm thinking we might do this in front end code. Like, let me just see, like, uh, view v HTML decode entities.
use vhtml. It will be escaped if you want raw HTML. HTML entities are automatically escaped. Maybe we don't worry about this right now. <laughs> Uh, Alka is saying uh, Cheerio might support it. Decode entities option. Let's see. Uh, Cheerio decode entities. Text should decode HTML entities. Well, the, I think the thing is technically, we're uh, we're just grabbing the raw HTML like right here, but. Wally's saying it's going to be a. 24 hour stream. <laughs> we should we should try doing that one day. We'll just like just go for 24 hours. That'd be fun. We can definitely take breaks, but I think that should be like the day that we uh will can make some more levels of the nosebleed like uh, mm. I'll do some more sketches, but like by the end our faces will be melted off and we'll actually have the sockets on it so like you can actually watch it happen. Okay, I just found this decode entities true. It's in an issue that is closed, so that should work. So let's try it. So when we do load right here, we'll tell it to decode entities. And let's see what happens. So specifically, vegan mac and cheese was not decoded, but now... <laughs> um, it did not decode them. Is this valid HTML encoding? It looks it looks weird. Okay. It could be because this let me let me let me show Elka where we're grabbing this from. So like the encoded entities are in here. Like they're in this script tag. So um don't know if it would know to decode them. Either way, I think we can do this on the front end later. We have spent way too much time talking about it. Let's put this stuff in the database. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think we're ready, right? We have menu name, menu section name, name, and that's gonna be like the name of the item. And you have the price, okay. So, Oh, so Alka's saying potentially they have errors in their, um, in their encoding. Alka is our uh, designated troubleshooter for all our issues. <laughs> oh, all, all the time. Here. Absolutely. We could not do it without Alka. Yeah, so I think they just have an issue. Again, we'll handle it later. Let's put these things in the database. So um, it's going to be very similar to before. So we probably want to um, like have an array of promises. We'll push into a collection called like menu items, and then we will um, set it set each item in here in the in the database. So yeah, let's do it. Right about here, Mr. Tony. Let's create a variable called promises and set it equal to an array. Yeah, I guess now would be a good time. I don't know if you mentioned the Discord on this stream, but like, if you if anybody ever thinks of like a um, yeah, we you know, we kind of talked about it, but like we have the the coding garden. And I think there should be links within the uh, stream itself. Like, if you guys ever think of any fixes for anything, like after the fact, like if you're watching this later, like by all means, go to the Discord. Yeah, and, or like, even like open up a GitHub issue. So like, uh, we haven't pushed it up yet, but this is going to be on the coding garden GitHub. So we'll have a repo here called like uh, menu items. And then you can make pull requests, you can ask questions, all the things. And yeah, then I think the we had somebody fix the, uh, the, the face bleeding thing, or a couple of things that we've had, like the uh, Frenonopoly. Yeah, well, so in Frenonopoly, there was, um, I forget his name, but yeah, people have made pull requests and then they like live on the deployed site. And then like on uh, NoobQuest, uh, me, I am so me fixed the, um, 
like added the names and like made it look better on different screen sizes. So we are absolutely open to suggestions and contributions. And here's all this chat that I missed. I guess I don't know if I don't know if I missed this that much. Yeah, we kind of talked about that. We need to make some more CJ emojis as well. <laughs> yeah, so if you're not familiar with those, there's the CJ grin, and there's also the CJ thinking emoji. Hmm. <laughs> cool. Um, all right, so we have our array of promises. Right here, we want to insert um, that menu item into the database. So we're going to do this. Um, though, does the menu item have... I guess the menu item doesn't technically need an ID. So if we look back at uh, the documentation for adding data, I think in this case, just pushing, I think it's called push or it's called add, will be just enough for what we need. Something like um, add. Yeah, so like menu items add, and it has all of the relevant information in there as well. So um, basically, right here is where we want to add the menu items. Let's make these all single quotes. OK, so this collection, let's call it menu items. Let's do like menu underscore items. And in this case, we just want to add that item. Let's just throw item in there. <laughs> Jasper's behind you. Um, and that should throw it in the database. And this actually returns a promise. So you can just do, let's do promises.push. And then uh, I'll help you out here because it'll be hard to select. But basically, we want to take this whole thing because it returns a promise and push it into that array. There we go. So that should add that menu item. And then um, now we'll wait for all the promises to complete. So after. this. And I guess technically, we'll put this array of promises in here because it won't exist if there was no menu. Let's do uh, await promise.all and pass in the promises. Tony? <laughs> yeah, you're muted too, but that's fine. Uh, but let's do await and then do uh, promise, capital promise.all. and then pass in uh, promises. OK, so that. And then we should just be able to log inserted menu items. Yay. Um, burger. <laughs> <laughs> is there a sandwich emoji? There is. And a salad. There's no pierogies, though. Mm. I guess what I mean, what's it's a pierogi like it's not a it's like it's like a dump. It's like a potato like an empanada, maybe more like a dumpling. OK. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um, this is great. Let's let's just test. Let's test it on um, the um, the pierogi mountain menu. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Do node index.js. And fingers crossed, everybody. Oh, wait, we uh, before you hit enter, let me get the uh, the web page ready because we should see all this stuff. Actually, I'll, 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 I'll refresh. Okay, so hit enter. All right, if we refresh it, we should see menu items. Here it comes. Yeah, there's oh. the menu items. Oh. Look at them. Look at them. Inserted the menu items. Cool. So um, 
It doesn't have a description. It's on the main. It's an entree. Cool. So we inserted the menu items for Pierogi Mountain. Awesome. So I think what we do now, Tony, is for every um, for every restaurant in our database, we go and grab all of the menu items. Okay. This could um, this could get like we're gonna we're gonna be making five hundred requests to their website. We could try to um, like limit the number of requests, but. Why not yeah. just try to get all of them? I don't know. I think this is how like we're talking about like when when they find out that your web's scraping and they do like a temporary ban. Like on your IP address, yeah. On your IP address, yeah. This might have like who knows? We'll see. Yeah, and so all of these, yeah. What's cool about this is all of these have a restaurant ID. So even if you if you find a restaurant with a given ID, you could then query menu items to get all the items for that restaurant. Or, because now all the menu items are in a single document store, you could query any menu item that has a name vegan or something like that. Okay. Now we get weird with it. So, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll call the get restaurants thing again. Let's take a quick break, quick stretch. Let's get ready to get all of the menu items for all of the um, restaurants. And I think, actually, I think if we do an await and then we do like a simple, like, I, I think we, I think we can make it so that we're only getting one uh, menu every second instead of like all of them all at once. Like it does like a little bitty delay. Yeah. So it like waits. So I think here's what we want to do. Um... We want to, at this point, we grabbed the restaurant. And at this point, we want to, like, await get menu. And we'll pass in the ID and the link. Um, and let's pass this in here. So got inserted menu items, and we'll also pass in ID and link. And then, so after we get the menu, we will then wait one second before getting the next one. But this is in a dollar sign each, isn't it? Yeah, so that's tricky. Yeah, because it's in a dollar sign each, can't exactly wait. Uh, should be, uh, just get menu. We, we called it get menu. One thing I'm thinking, though, is we could do when it's done inserting all of the promises, it does it like one at a time. Okay. Mm. No, I think we're gonna get we're gonna get like hacky with it only because we've been streaming for an hour and a half. But here's my thought: so we actually hold on to an array uh, of all the restaurants. And then each one gets pushed into this array. Okay. So that pushes the restaurant in. Um, will, a, yeah. And so the interesting thing about async await is if you create a like a for loop and you await inside of the for loop, it'll actually wait for each one. So this is what we want to do because we want to wait for each restaurant to um, get the menu. So let's say for restaurant in restaurants, we're going to await get menu with restaurant.id and restaurant.link. And is that how for in? Should this be for of? 
Have you used that before, Tony? I thought it was four in. Let's see. So four in is for an object. We want to look at all of the values in an array. Examples. Yeah, we're gonna we want to use of. So each value in the array. Mm. So for restaurant of uh, restaurants, we'll get the menu. We then need to wait one second. <laughs> it's it's been two. I think I think it's only been two and a half hours. Ed is saying I'm getting a little cloudy. Yeah, it's been two and a half. We we've done like four hour, five hour streams before. Okay, then we want to like await delay. I mean, I'll have to write this function, but like delay one thousand milliseconds. And then it'll go back and get the, the next menu. So I think I think this will work. Let's create this function delay. This will take in uh, milliseconds and it will return a new promise. Promise takes in resolve and reject. And then um, <laughs> we want to do a set timeout for the number of milliseconds. And after that number of milliseconds, we want to call Hold result. on. Let me add another L on milliseconds. Oh, yeah, go for it. <laughs> if I can go ahead, I can't click in time. <laughs> there's like a delay or something. So there's two L's in milliseconds? I, um, I think so. Okay, so. What this is, is that this is a function that returns a promise that will resolve in that number of milliseconds. So what should happen is we get the menu for that restaurant, then wait one second, and then we get one for the next restaurant. Let's actually, just to see if this is working, let's wait like 30 seconds. And we should see first restaurant finished, and then like waiting, and then it'll do like the next one. And if that works, we'll, we'll, we'll lower it to like one second. Okay. Um, and now we don't wanna grab the individual menu. We wanna grab all of the restaurants in Columbus, Ohio. Moment of truth. This is like the 10th moment of truth tonight. This is moments of truth. <laughs> A moment of truth. Oh God, unexpected syntax token. Uh, token. Um, line 82. Oh, so this actually failed. Maybe that restaurant doesn't have a menu. Hold on, like how is the URL that we're, we're working with right now? Like, do we need to change the end of it? Oh no, because uh, right now we're just getting all the restaurants. Okay. I think, uh, but this is one thing we didn't account for. Like, what if a restaurant um, didn't actually have um, uh, restaurant data? So let's let's actually see which one it fails on. Oh, try again. Uh, PF Chang's menu apparently doesn't have a thingy. So let's try it. And if we look at the source of this page, application ldjson might not be formatted correctly, or people from allmenus.com saw that we were streaming this and they broke it on purpose. No way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Um, so it's failing on this website, and basically it can't parse that as JSON, so maybe we grab, oh, you know what? Maybe it's not the first one on the page. That's, that might be why. Let's search for uh, LD JSON. So this is the first one on the page, but there is an unexpected token somewhere. Um, let's just, let's log the raw JSON to see what we're actually getting back.
at position one, two, one, two. This is unfortunate. I really don't like this. <laughs> It's this, it's the simple fact that like this JSON that they provided is actually it has like it's not valid JSON somewhere. Hmm. Can we find actually what we can do is we could throw this into a JSON validator and it should tell us exactly where it went wrong. Let's do that. There are a lot of menu items at this PF Jinx. Oh, I didn't even get all of it. Um, <laughs> yeah, Alka. Yeah, J wish I wish JSON.parse was more verbose. Me too. So it says it's at line one two one two. Here's what we'll do. Let's write this to a file, and then uh, VS Code should show us where the syntax error is. I think. So. Sounds good. <laughs> I saw, like, I looked up at the the camera, Tony, and you're like slumped down in the chair. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna bring in file system, and then uh, right here, I'm just gonna write it. So fs dot write file sync. So I want it just to go to like menu dot json. Um, the actual data is going to be the raw JSON and should be UTF, UTF-8. Okay, so now if we look back at, the, it should have written, a, okay, so it made menu.json. Um, Here we are. Unexpected end of string. Oh, <laughs> I think this is it because there's a new line here and JSON does not like that there's a new line. Yeah. Or is it happening in multiple places? Hmm. Let's look at a JSON validator. Maybe we can find a better JSON parsing library. I don't know. Actually, let's just search NPM really quick for like LD JSON. Line delimited. A JSON LD parser. The JSON LD is designed as a lightweight syntax and user express linked data. I think it it may actually support um, new lines. Do we have to install this? Yeah. Um, or if there's a way to parse a string? I don't know. I don't know. So, uh, Alka is saying replace slash in with slash in in double quotes. What do you mean? How would that work? So take all new lines and replace it with new lines in double quotes. Let's try that actually. Let's see what happens, um, like what gets written to the file. So let's do um, raw JSON dot replace. So replace explicit new lines with an escaped new line. Yeah. Let's see what happens. So 
So what got written out Yeah, so that would make the raw JSON on a single line. Oh, it needs to be a global replacement. Yeah, so we'll do a regular expression, global. And let's actually, we should just be able to throw this on. Like, technically, if this works, it'll just start parsing. So like, replace all explicit new lines with an escaped new line. And then the parser should do its thing. Is that how like JSON like parsing just it just dislikes new lines? Well, I don't think it likes new lines within um, <laughs> within oh uh, within double quotes. Yeah. Am I is my is my slash in the wrong direction? <laughs> uh, where are we? Yeah, I'm definitely losing it. Okay. <laughs> um, I think was it wasn't it the front end uh, Opoly like the longest that we were able to go like in a row. We went like five hours that day, Tony. Break time. Yeah. That was a good. That was like a good five hours. Like right now, I think it's just like we thought like, oh, you're gonna do some easy scraping, and right now it's like. Uh... <laughs> I okay. How is it so hard? I mean, I think the, the main reason is their JSON is not valid that we just scraped out. Like, for some of them it is, but for this specific menu, it's not. It's okay. almost like like it should have been a size. You're like, when you're like, oh, this is, this is going to be so easy <laughs> when you saw it. Yeah. Um, I'm just looking at this library again. Like, is there a way to pass in um, parse? No, because I'm going to parse like the raw text. Yeah, be feel free to spam the tractor emoji if you're you're confused right now. OK, so just replace all new lines with nothing. How about that? So it's Let's like. See. I don't know if that's going to break anything, though. So yeah, I guess that will be explicit new lines, because anything that's inside of double quotes technically would be Is a new escaped. line. Well, it would be, would be escaped. So Let's... would that make everything go on its own line? That's fine, though, because the JSON parser doesn't care. Oh, shit! Excuse my language. <laughs> <laughs> I think it worked. Um, let's see what got, what got written. Um, yeah, that, that did it, somehow. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the winner. And if we look back, we should... Well, we, we stopped it in the middle of inserting... So like I think what I want to do is empty out the database of re of menu items. Like if we go all the way to the bottom, um, yeah, ramp pesto. That's not at the pierogi place. It is now. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna <laughs> the geo coordinates say so. <laughs> I'm gonna delete all of the menu items, and then I think we're ready to go. So here's what I'm gonna do. Instead of waiting, um, yeah. Instead of, wait, am I logging? Where am I logging? I'm logging that. Instead of waiting 30 seconds, let's wait one second. And technically, for 500 uh, different restaurants, this should take <laughs> forever. <laughs> uh, people are people are like hype, <laughs> De demonetize. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, yeah, so we'll wait one one minute, and uh, here here we go. Um, this should yeah, it should wait for all of the menu items to insert too. I think this is the winner, Tony. Now we just sit back for the next eight minutes. This is yeah. We can double check that it's inserting, so we should be getting menu items for PF Chang's. Yeah, mm. they're, they're, yeah, they are. The Look part, at this is that. This part where we, we like we get our our pipes and top hats and we just sit around like <laughs> big armchairs. Yes. Okay, so I'm looking to go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now we're doing Red oh. Robin. Red Robin. Yeah. Hooters. <laughs> <laughs> Hooters. 
<laughs> so there are several different hooters apparently. Cameron's American Bistro. Well, are we getting rate limited? Like it could just be a menu with a ton of items. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna grab a chair. We're just gonna sit here for eight minutes and watch this beautiful thing parse all those menu items. <laughs> uh, I'll, be, I'll be right back. <laughs> Don Pablo. Mm. This is exciting. <laughs> yeah, I think like this Bravo one is like a bigger menu. And they have multiple locations. Let's let's check it out. The Bravo Italiana Kitchen cuz it could be they have I mean if it's like a fancy place, they have like several different menus. Excuse me. Yeah. They have dinner, lunch, oh, yeah. brunch, catering. Wow. <laughs> See you later, Joe. Uh, Makika says, "Cool work, guys. Thank you very much. We worked hard. That was that was two and a half hours. <laughs> 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 we didn't build a front end." Um, but like honestly, I think we can leave this scraping in the background. I think we, we should just take we take take a quick break, you know, catch our breath. I think we could build a front end in like ten minutes. <laughs> All right, someone someone like hold them to that. <laughs> um, actually, I, we are. Let's take just like a two three minute break. Okay. Okay, we'll be right back. We're we're scraping. We're scraping like crazy. We're gonna try to build a very basic strun at front end. Um, but here we go. Um, here is the break thingy. Okay, they shouldn't be able to hear you. Tony, I'll be right back. <clears throat> I didn't actually transition.
Okay, we're back. Um, here, I'll share my screen. Tony, I think they can hear you. Hello. Um, we did some serious coding today, and right now, <laughs> we are our code is running and just like getting all the menu items that it can from all of these 500 restaurants in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> um, so those are inserting, and I'm actually just going to let that keep running. But what I want to do is build a very basic front end that I really don't think will take that long. Somebody hold me to it. Should I put, I'll put a timer up. Like we will not code for more than 15 minutes on this Vue.js app. Okay? All right. Okay, Tony? Yeah, Tony, if, Tony. If, if it goes past it and it's not like properly deployed, your computer explodes. Well, no, it's not gonna be deployed because well, I don't you, know about yeah, the legality whatever. of this, but I don't want to get in trouble with your wife. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna limit this to 15 minutes. Let's do like this. There we go. Let's go a bit smaller. Is that as small as it goes? That's like as small as it goes. Okay. 15 minutes to build front. End. And the cool thing is, like technically, we don't really even need. Um, um, Uh, I'm so cloudy. <laughs> We've been at this too long. Uh, technically, we don't need all of the data to be in there because we can go ahead and query all of the menu items that have already been inserted. Uh -huh. um, and so, like, if we look, like, oh wow, I've I've frozen the browser because we're inserting so many things. Uh, <laughs> hello, Cassandra. Only 15 minutes. We're gonna try. We're gonna do our best. Where it's gonna be like hacky code. We're gonna do it. Um, let's do it. Okay, so. In this directory, we'll go up one, and we'll make a client directory. And uh, we said we were going to do this with Vue.js. We're not even going to um, um, use the Vue CLI. We're just going to create like an app.view. And then we'll put all of our code in there. So we'll go into the client. There's our app.view. Let's scaffold out a Vue.js app. Did, did we already install Vue in here? Uh, we didn't, no, so I'm going to show something really cool. So I created that file. Now, all I got to do is say view serve app.view. And this is because I have the CLI tool installed. And then that will just automatically serve up that file. No need to generate. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, OK, let's go to it. Hello, world. Awesome. Um, I guess let's get Bootstrap because why not? Or Bootswatch? Which one should we do? Uh, 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 Split second uh, decision. Uh, 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 oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, uh, sketchy. Uh, no, no, wait, no, that's no, terrible. No. That's terrible. terrible. Uh, yeah. Minty, Minty, Minty. It looks yeah, I like it. It's, it's, it's inviting. Okay. So really, we should be able to grab the minified CSS and then just like import this into our styles down at the bottom. So we'll do like an at import. Throw that in, and hey, delicious. <laughs> so, um, I guess we'll grab a nav bar. Which color should we do? Uh, the first one. First, first, first of everything. First of everything. Okay. So we need a nav in our HTML. Let's throw like a section. We'll throw the nav right here. We'll get rid of all this extra stuff. I guess really we just wanted the nav. What are we going to call our app, Tony? We haven't named it yet. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Awesome. So um, now we need like a form. So like a little search box where you can search for a menu item, right? Um, mm -hmm. So like really we'll have a form. We'll have div class form group. I think this should work. OK, so let's have a form. Actually, let's do this. We'll have another section in here. This will have a class of uh, container and margin top five. And we'll have a form inside of it with that. OK, Tony, I realize I haven't let you type at all. That's um, OK. We've got to get through this. <laughs> We've got to get through this. OK, let's call this uh, search. Seer. 
search, search, uh, we'll call this search, type is text, um, described by uh, search help, placeholder, chicken sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the ID here is search help. Search help, cool. And the help text is enter inter a. Inter a uh, I don't know. <laughs> Were you going to say something funny? Yeah, I was going to try. <laughs> okay. Enter a menu item to search. Okay. So we want to say chicken sandwich. We want to click go, and that should give you all of the menu items in Columbus, Ohio that are in our database so far that have chicken sandwich in Do we menu. need to put a button on there real quick? Uh, yes, let's do that. So um, let's search for, like, buttons. Which button? The first one, the very first. Uh, hello, Oliver. Welcome. Uh, primary, that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're on a speed crunch. We don't want to get in trouble with Tony's wife. We, we got to get this app done. Alka's okay. in charge of chat. <laughs> okay. Um, this should just say search. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so let's it's say this button. Form. It says a type of submit. It's inside the form. What's it look like? Great. It looks dope. It looks beautiful. Okay. So when... <laughs> When, when the form is submitted, so, okay, I'll let you type, Tony. Right here, we want to say... Uh, VF or uh, well, VF no, submit. Uh, at submit, yeah. So do at submit equals, um, and uh, use double quotes, and say um, search menu items. Camel case. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, like that. Awesome. So we'll have to create this method. Uh, we'll also add dot prevent right here because it'll prevent the default action. Um, and then now we need a method called uh, search menu items. So in here, we have our uh, methods. It's an object. Um, it has search menu items in there. And um, we also we want to keep track of what the user is typing in here. So Mr. Tony, please do v dash model. And let's just call this search. Uh, and double quote search, cool. And so that needs to be bound to our data. So on our component, we have data. This is a function that returns an object. It has search. That's initially an empty string. And then when we submit the form, let's just log this.search. So it should be like whatever the user entered in. OK, so uh, DevTools, hello. Oh, I spelled that wrong. Oh, well, but we got it. Cool. So now <laughs> we need to query Firebase for all of the menu items that have this in. Right now, we'll just do in the name, just in the name. Um, and so if we go here, we want to query. We're going to have to set up a connection. I honestly think we can just copy and paste our existing connection file. Um, we'll need to npm install Firebase, but it'll be fine. Let's uh, get data. I think we can do a where. We've got the double equals um, order and limit data. I, I guess we need to find the operators because we want to find um, not if it is equal to, but if it um, um, contains. Contains it. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Um, let's just say uh, fire store. What is the method that we're using here? Where contains. Like we might have to use like a wildcard. Where array contains. Well, not array contains. Uh, where do we find this in the docs? Query data, queries. Where less than. Oh, give me all the operators. OK, we'll just. Let's do an exact match right now, but we'll f we'll figure out how to do all of the. All Get the that operations. break out of here. <laughs> um, so where where were we? We were here. We just want to do this. Okay, so we want to set. We don't have the DB yet, but once we have it, we should just be able to do uh, throw in here. We need to say uh, menu underscore items because that's the collection that we're um, trying to get into. Then and then here is search term. Oh, yeah. So that, that should be name, because that's the, the property on the document that we want to query. 
And then here should be this dot search term. Come on, come on. <laughs> let, let me do it. <laughs> we only got five minutes. Okay, this dot. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> this dot search. Ah, ah, ah. Search t t term. Search term. Okay. And okay. We have no time to do this, but I'm gonna do it anyways. So <laughs> quotes... <laughs> and so that, and then we gotta do a dot get, and that should give us the entire array. We'll await this. This will make this async. We need to get the DB. I'm gonna hide my screen really quick just so I don't reveal all of our DB information. But I think I can literally just copy the same DB file that we're using on the server because it has the connection. Um, and then I should be able to just import it in. I'll need to install Firebase. So in, here's my screen again, in the, um, client, let's do um, npm install Firebase. And we're in the client folder. <laughs> uh, Oliver's saying, don't think you can do a light query on Firestore. That's unfortunate, but we'll, we'll, we'll do that later. Like right now it has to be an exact match. But that's, uh, I think we have to type in the exact, exact thing, okay. Now do a uh, few serve. Is it going to complain? It was complaining about regenerator runtime. What's that about? I guess we need this. Oh, it might be. Oh, it's because I'm using async await. Four minutes. <laughs> Why? Repository not found. What the heck? Uh, maybe we just can't use async await. I think that's what that's complaining about. Oh, well. Uh, we should be able to, imp oh, let me hide my screen. I don't want to display the DB info. But I should be I should, should be able to import that DB info. So like uh, import DB from DB, and that will be the connection. But let's just not use async await. So I could be wrong. That, that might not be what it's complaining about, but that's what I think. Uh, this should be items. And we'll just log the items. OK, sweet. I think we're there. Um, so fresh, awesome. Now, if I search for chicken sandwich, search. Ah! Queries where requires a valid third argument, but it was undefined. Oh. Oh, this search term. Oh, it's just, just this dot search, not search term. OK, let's try again. Chicken sandwich. Go. OK, query snapshot. Docs, it's an array of length one. We got, oh, and then document, data. Jesus, why is this happening? Um, I, I, think, I think it worked, though. Snapshot. We'll look at the docs for each doc. Doc.data. OK, so we're going to have to call this on everything. Here we go. Here we go. OK. Two minutes. Two minutes. OK, um, we grab the doc. We do doc.data. We need the Mission Impossible theme song right bum, now. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, bum, bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. <laughs> um, So let's create like items. That's going to be an array. And then we grab the data. We say items.push um, that given item. Then we'll log the items. But is it going to like going to make it appear on the actual like page? Oh, no, yeah. We still got to write that, Tony. But we got a minute and a half. We got all the time in the world. This dot items equals items. Cool. In our data, we'll say items is an empty array. So that should overwrite it. What happens when we search for chicken sandwich? OK, we got an array. We got one thing in there. Its name is chicken sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> it's at some restaurant, battered, dipped, and deep fried. Oh, sweet. OK, so um, last moment of truth. Right below the 
form, we just need, um, I don't know, a div. And then uh, inside of this, we're going to like repeat divs. Oh, 40 seconds. Ah, ah, v4 item in items. We're just going to throw like an h3 with the item.name. And it does need a key. It should be item. I don't know. That's not good. But oh well. Should work. 20 seconds. That's just, that should do it. OK, refresh. It's not going to have any of the info associated with it. But there we go. There Chicken sandwich. <laughs> uh, pizza. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> A uh, burger. Hey. Okay. All right. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not very usable. But we're there. If you need to go, Tony, you can go. But I'm gonna spend like ten minutes making this usable. So like we can show what restaurant it belongs to. We can show what what uh, menu it's on. Yeah. Like I mean, it wouldn't. It wouldn't take that long. But yeah. But I'm. I think I'm. I'm done for now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It, that was awesome. We did it. Okay, thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, actually, I'm I'm gonna stick around for like ten more minutes just to like, cause I want to show what restaurant is this at, how much does this burger cost, and we have all of that info, so we should be able to do it. Um, but Tony has to go. I appreciate you, Tony. Thanks for sticking yeah. through it. Three hours strong. I think I I was just thinking about like the tractor emoji and how we uh <laughs> we had that last time when we were doing the uh, emoji thing. Yeah. I think we should do like a, a coding garden sticker with. The uh, tractor emojis. The tractor emoji. I love it. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, g give me one food item to search for before you go. Um, ramen. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's broken. Well, the and, and the main thing is, um. Oh my God! We over we overloaded our Firebase database. <laughs> <laughs> it broke after Domino's. It, well, we just we inserted so many menu items. Oh well. I don't know. We'll we'll come back to that. Okay. Um, we do have a lot in there, though. Okay, you got to go, Tony. Thank you very much. All right. See ya. Bye. <laughs> and there we go. Okay, that was that was a lot of fun. <laughs> um, but let's let's do this. So one thing I want to do is uh, when the page loads, get all of the restaurants, um, so that I can actually show the restaurant information because each item has like a restaurant ID associated with it. So um, we should be able to let's say um, when this is mounted, we want to do DB collection restaurants. So we're going to get all the restaurants in the DB. Get. Then that should give us back. Um, snapshot, I think. Let's look up how to do this. So basically, we're querying um, an entire collection. Get doc dot data. No, it's actually, I think it's going to be the same. It's going to be pretty much the same thing. But instead, it's just restaurants, and we have to iterate over it to get that array. So it's going to be very similar to this, but um, instead of items, this will be restaurants. Let's say restaurants. We'll actually make this an object because we'll be able to just grab the restaurant by ID. Um, and so restaurant will be the doc data, and then restaurants at restaurant.id will be equal to um, that given restaurant. So we're going to build up this object. And then after we have it, um, we'll set it on our data. OK. Oh, I see. So um, Oliver's mentioning, like, if I want to do um, uh, like keyword searching, I'd have to create an array on the record, and then I could do like in array. I, I really want to be able to do like case insensitive searching though. 
And actually, I should be able to stop sharing. Let's close this. Cool. Um, this should give us all the restaurants. That... So if we open up the dev tools, uh, duplicate keys, yeah, that's fine. But yeah, so now we have all the restaurants locally. Cool. So like right here, we could do like a, a small and then um, like uh, it should be like italics. And right there we'll throw uh, restaurants at item.restaurant ID dot name. Um, yeah, so that should actually let's let's stop logging it. So now each item that pops up should actually show the name of the restaurant that it's at. So like chicken sandwich go. Villa Fresh Italian Kitchen. Um, we're not we're using a bad thing as the key. <laughs> um, so we definitely need to find that. If we look back in our database, um, is there anything unique about a menu item? Not really, but it does have a document ID. Um, in here, I, th I think is it just like doc.key? Because I might be able to put that on the item so that it's unique when it's repeating. No. Let's just log the doc. Because I think there's a I think there's a unique ID on there. Oh, it's just dot ID. Awesome. So Let's say uh, item.id is equal to doc.id. So that should be a unique ID. And then uh, in here, we can just do item.id for the, the key and the repeat. OK. So now, if I search for pizza, we see uh, all the pizzas at these different restaurants. If I search for a chicken sandwich, I see there's Villa Fresh Italian Kitchen, Sumeno's. Um, if I search for a hamburger, there's Apollo's, Jack's Downtown Diner, Bob Evans, Fiesta. Look at us. <laughs> um, cool. So we have menu items. We probably want to show the price of the item. So uh, each menu item has uh, offers on it that has an actual price. So let's just grab like offers at zero if it exists. So Bootstrap has styling for um, DL, which is a description list. And um, we could do like um, description title. And we only want to show this if item.offers exists and item.offers.length is greater than, oh. Has, it has a length. So let's just show like the first price. So let's say price, and then you have your description definition. This will be item offers at zero dot price, I believe. Yeah, capital price. And let's just throw like a dollar sign in front of it. Okay. So we search for a chicken sandwich. Price. 569 price 879 that's so awesome <laughs> um, I believe we we could potentially we should link out to the restaurant that this menu item is for um, what info do we have so we have we have the restaurant ID and then a restaurant has a link to its menu so we could just link to the restaurant itself. So this uh, restaurant name right here, let's wrap it in an anchor tag. And we'll just say the uh, location is going to be 
that given restaurant at that given link. Um, but really, we need to put the um, um, Grubhub, not Grubhub, menu items URL in front of it. I think like that. Uh, let's do target is in a blank window and um, no opener, no follow. Okay. So now this should link out to that menu. Cool. That's awesome. And like here you could go, well, I guess one thing is we're, we're not scraping like the web website name and stuff like that. We probably should have done that. Oh, well, I think we've done it. Um, oh yeah, Jack, Jake is mentioning we should add the link to Grubhub. Let's do that. Let's actually like copy. Um, that this this image URL, copy image address. Yeah, we'll just use that. <laughs> so um, if it has a Grubhub link, then we'll do it. Uh, where should we put that? I guess we'll just put it like right above here. Uh, we'll have a div and only show this div. Um, grub. Not item. It would be restaurant.grubhub. This is some hacky code. I'm just trying to get the site like a little bit usable before I end the stream. So uh, grab the restaurant with that ID. Uh, if it has Grubhub on it, then I want to show an image whose source is that Grubhub image. And uh, this thing should link out to the Grubhub page. So let's do a very similar thing. We'll have an anchor tag. We will do all of this good stuff. And the href, in this case, will just be the Grubhub property. Cool. So chicken sandwich. Are there any Grubhubs? Nope. What about for pizza? Nope. Uh, Let's find a, a menu item on PF Chang's because I know that they have Grubhub. Uh, Asian Caesar salad. Hey, and then we can click order on Grubhub. There we go. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, oh, and so there's a question in the chat. Uh, what do no opener and no follow do? So because I have on the anchor tag, um, target is blank, that means open it in a new tab. So like when I click this link, it opens it in a new tab. But if you leave off uh, no opener, then in the tab that just got opened, you actually can do something like window.opener.close or like window.opener.location.href is equal to google.com. So like, it's a way of like, if I just open this window, somebody could run a malicious script that redirects it. Maybe I have these tags wrong. Yep, I have them wrong because if we go back to the page, it literally got redirected to Google. So um, you could potentially redirect to a, web a website where somebody's doing something malicious. Like they check to see if somebody opened like JavaScript or like the target blank was used to open it and then they could replace that tag. So let me, let me get these things right because I have them wrong. Um, anchor tag, no opener. Yeah, anchor tag phishing attack. Oh, rel equals no opener and no refer. I got that wrong. But if you ever open an anchor tag in a new window, you always want to do this. Otherwise, that that window that you just opened could literally change the page that just opened it. <laughs> yes, thank you. I was missing real. <laughs> um, 
cool. So now if I were to uh, search for, um, what was that? Asian Caesar salad. Um, if I go here, and now in the console, I believe just like window.opener is just null. Yeah, now it's null. Now it's now the, the, the page you just opened couldn't change the page that opened it. Cool. I think we've done it. <laughs> um, we're, we're missing a lot of things. This search has to be like exact. We need to work on our database inserts because at one point um, I was just inserting into the database too often. So this was saying, uh, is use maximum back off delay to prevent overloading the back end. Um, so because I inserted so many menu items, like if we look at our database, there are just so many and it keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going. So, <laughs> so I inserted so many menu items that eventually Firestore was like, whoa, stop it. But you can see before that, it handled it pretty well. Those are all the menus that we did insert. Um, yeah, I think it's great. Let's, I just want to find, um, I know like Domino's was in there. So um, fiery Hawaiian pizza. So like if I search for this, all the Domino's restaurants should pop up. Yeah, and so like this is one where you could order on Grubhub. For whatever reason, these other menus didn't actually have a price. This one has a price. Cool. All right, we've done it. I've been talking way too long. It's been three and a half hours. I think we're gonna end it there. I'll push this code up to GitHub. I'll put the link in the description. Thanks everyone for watching. This is like the most viewers ever that have tuned in. You all are great. Um, be sure to uh, join the Discord if you'd like to continue chatting there. Um, in the description below is a link to uh, Patreon so you can support me there if you'd like to. It's not required, but uh, very much appreciated. There's also a link to uh, Streamlabs. You can just do like a one-time donation as well. Hope you had fun. We'll see you next time. And uh, yeah, wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. Here's this.